close anyways. Alright. I'm gonna turn off the music for now. It's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the synth wave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, we should, be, we should be listening to the synth wave. <laughs> Andrew? What are you listening to? <laughs> Andrew, look at me in the eye. Mick. <laughs> atmospheric metal to die, too. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Andrew. Santa. <laughs> I got the stream pulled up. And Mealy gets pulled down. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull this. Oh, we're not live. Well, that sucks. I'm going to make a campfire. Yeah, boy. Don't make a campfire. I'm going to make a campfire right here. You can't tell what to do. It's, it it's cold in this room. It's 78 degrees in here. I'm freezing. You're crazy. <laughs> no. At least you're not like my parents who leave it at 83. Fucking maniacs. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. Dude, when I was growing up, one of my friends like that I went like elementary school with, his dad kept a thermostat at like 80, like 5. And like at that point, why? Why? Yeah, like at that point, why even have AC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, dude, it's, it's only on... Okay, I guess we're only live on Twitch. Well, that's all we need. Right? Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. <clears throat> uh, Are uh, you ready? Yes. And welcome to another episode of uh, Talk of Opportunity! God damn it, I'm just going to pull up the clip, so we're not going to have to do <laughs> No, this. Andrew, don't! No, nope, I'm doing it. You can't stop me. Anyway, go on. <laughs> oh, it's been a minute. It's been like a month and a half, actually. What happened? I don't know. We went into a warp hole and came back uh, three three years later, and now we're here. Uh, How hard was that? It took me three seconds. <laughs> it took you way longer than three seconds. Okay, well, mine I, was instantaneous. I had to wait for the ad because there was a there was a fucking Olive Garden ad over, yeah, okay. over, that, 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 over a four second DJ air horn <laughs> sample video. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, well, we're back. We're not talking about RPGs today. No, sir, we're not. We are actually talking about something much more, more sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about books. More precisely, The Expanse. Because we just finished it. I know we did like two episodes on it. Like one book, then the next book. And then and, after that, and, it was just, and, and then it was just like, oh, hey, by the way, I finished the whole series. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it was just me trying to catch up. Anyway, thank you guys for coming back. Talk of Opportunity. And uh, podcast all things about RPGs and gaming and books. And we're back after so, so long with a lot of energy. Uh, this is Jose, one of your hosts. And with me as usual, Andrew. I finished The Expanse. My soul is crushed. I have. No reason to go on anymore. Oh, wait, there's Duke. That's our, our lives have been fulfilled. We need no more in this life. <laughs> but with that, let's play the music before we get into it. So after that brutal assault by the Orc Warrior, the initiative now goes to you. Jose, what do you do? I'm going to cast... Uh... That part was not live, so you're good. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> but it will be on, on an actual release. That's fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, man, it's been a minute. Uh, Andrew, it's nice to see you. I haven't seen you since. What are you talking about? Three we, months ago. We just recorded an episode. Oh, fuck. I forgot. Time dilation from faster yeah, than dude. light travel. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it took, it took a minute for, for our podcast to get to the soul system from... Laconia. <laughs> Here, hold on. Let me let, let me hork up this breathable uh, oxygenated liquid. <laughs> okay, we're good now. <laughs> oh, yes. But wow, my blur is like super blur. Yeah, Anyways, I know. Um, well, let's 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 get into this. We we 
we uh we were doing a we were supposed to do a series on the expanse and talk about each one of the books as we finished it and things happen and next thing we know we're nine books in and I'm like holy shit we just finished okay it. so, so, it's, so it's, <laughs> we get to talk about the whole thing in one go okay so the idea was that we were gonna read a book talk about it read a book then talk about it read a book and then talk about it but I was like, hey, you know what? These books are really good, so fuck that. <laughs> I'm just gonna... <laughs> and then... we, we, get, we even got one of our listeners to actually read it. <laughs> and he's like, really? on the third book, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, Howard. <laughs> okay. And it, and, and it was like, by the time we were supposed to talk about the third book, I was like, five books in. I'm like, I kind of forgot yeah. the event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. So. Uh, I I just finished it uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, yesterday morning. So it's still fresh in my head. Um, for all of you guys who are listening who don't know about the Expanse, you know, I mean, it's the Expanse. There's an Amazon show about it, and it's essentially well, a, it was a sci-fi show first, and Amazon picked it up, and, and Amazon, yeah, uh, it is a space opera. Uh, people compare it with Game of Thrones in space. I think it's it's fair to compare it with that because it's in that you know. Well, it, it's it's what you call it. It's in that uh, that scale of like, there's a lot happening. Right. It's epic. Right. But um, not, I don't know it, about about like the character deep that George R. R. Martin has. Like, it, they're they're stepped in it, but it's not as much. Well, as, I know. mean, it's not only that, but like the Expanse is not nearly as dr- I mean, e- even at like its darkest moments, there's still like hope. Whereas, yeah, that's whereas, true. Whereas like George R. R. Martin's like, no, the situation is fucked beyond repair so yeah and now and, Ooh, okay. and, and and now you get to watch the characters you you love pick off the, one one by one by circumstance yep. wait andrew andrew we it's been i know it's been a minute but we forgot about traditions what are you drinking today I'm, what is your what is in your what is in your uh drink bowl today i am drinking the coffee of the future which is to say just coffee <laughs> Because the coffee it, never changed. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, baby. Fix it. I'm just, I'm just drinking some cold brew that I had in the fridge. Some cold brew. Nothing changed. Nothing, you know. Yeah, I am drinking something that I actually learned because I'm trying to step away from like sodas and like bad things for my body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Why would you do that? Miserably, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm failing miserably. So, <laughs> but I'm still trying. There is these. I call them poopy sodas. Oh, I uh, love those. Those are yeah, puppy sodas. Yeah. Because they help you poop, and they taste really good, and they're actually pretty healthy. The only, oh, problem, comparable, the only problem is know. don't drink too much of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because it has uh, it has uh, uh, prebiotics and all that. Kind yeah, of. it's like if you drink a lot of kombucha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm drinking my favorite flavor, which is rabbit raspberry rose. Um, I I did have a couple of the poppy sodas. There was there is another one I like. Oh man, I uh, of, of of yeah, it's always next to it. Uh, yeah, so it starts with a no. Which is pretty good too. And it has like it has, but it's like, it's, it has like the old fashioned soda like logo mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those those yeah. are the ones I like. Yeah. Yeah. They they're a good replacement for you know, Coke. Anyways. Whenever. Nothing well, fancy with our drinks today. Whenever. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. No. 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 We're not. We're 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 keeping it simple. Um. We're we're in the belt right now. So we know yeah, yeah. there's really really not a lot that we can drink. Uh. We're I'm uh after we're done recording I'm gonna have um some red kibble. Which, oh, I, good. which is just good. Rishi mush. And <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. The fact that everything is mushrooms. I'm like, I, and, everything. And, and me, as a mushroom loving guy, I'm like, I can't drink mushroom bourbon. That's where I draw mus- the line. <laughs> or mushroom cake. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, some more of that so, oxygenated liquid came up. Yeah. So back to back to what the expanse is. Um, it's a book series by James S. A. Corey. There's two authors that it's a, it's a pen name for two authors. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing series of nine books. Um, I started. I got into it because of Amazon Prime show. I saw it. I'm like, wow, that looks really interesting. However, I want to. I don't want to do the Game of Thrones things. I want to read the book and then watch the show. Right. Yeah. Um. And, um, and see, I'm I'm kind of you know how you watch Game of Thrones and can't get into the books. I'm worried because I read the books. I'm not gonna be able to get into the show. I think in this case, it's different enough that you'll okay. be like, okay, this is interesting. And what makes... But is it different like, enough to where it... we'd be like, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's no, weird. you're going to be... There's going to be some parts you're going to be like, that's bullshit. Okay. But you have to also remember that the, the writers are very... Like, they work really closely okay. on the show, on the production of the show. Um, 
But um, but I think I think the one thing that kind of blew my mind after you know n not narratively, but but like kind of the one thing that blew my mind about the series was how fast they came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, almost once a year until like the sixth book, I think. But and then it was every two years, and it was just like bam, 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 bam. And it's like nine books in like eleven years. Like holy crap! Like dude, what we we said this off air, George R. R. Martin. What's your problem, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then the other thing that drove me to this um, to this series was the fact that a lot of people were like, "Oh, the science is really good. The science is really good." And sure enough, the science is really good to the point that like it becomes its own character through the whole series. The science is really good, but it's also not like supremely dry. Like trying to read yeah. other sci-fi where they're like breaking down yeah. the schematics of a you know of something is like yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> something is... and 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 thankfully i think the authors know that because whenever there's like this big like scientific moment blah 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 there's always one character like oh could you have it in english not that poorly written but you know yeah but but yeah, yeah. you know like i think I, I think later on the the best way they justified it was that later on they have two scientist characters that are two different schools of science so one doesn't understand one thing and the other one does understand the other. So they have to, even though they are both geniuses in their own right, they have to break it down in layman's terms for oh, yeah, the other yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. And you're in between like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> and it's funny because it's like, okay, I'm a biologist. I do not know what yeah. this is. You do realize that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so before we get started with the discussion though, the actual discussion, this episode is going to be split into a spoiler-free section and then a heavy spoiler. -free going section. to try my best to keep it spoiler-free. Like I, I mean, we might, we might, we might spoil a couple of things from like the early, early books, only because it's so hard to remember. <laughs> well, I mean, also, <laughs> you know what I mean. Also, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of just expecting, not like, not like out of like animosity or something, but just just to drop something. Yeah, it's something might slip. So just. Yeah. Yeah. If if you if you want to go into the expanse completely blind, I would probably just stop listening. Yeah. <laughs> Give us yeah. a like, comment, yeah. subscribe, but stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, what are your over your overall thoughts, Andrew, on the series? I just just big blanket, you know. Before we get into the the, the actual question, I think. Oh, I probably shouldn't crack my knuckles into the mic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are your overall thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, very is that celery <laughs> yes i'm eating celery <laughs> um i think overall the expanse is a surprisingly easy read um yeah. it is yeah it is fun it is emotional it's not like too terribly dry for sci-fi which is always a territory that you kind of risk getting into um the authors kind of know. The authors are actually very good at what's the word? Like dramatic pacing, where yeah. in this, in particularly in the last book, something big will happen, and then they'll switch POVs to <laughs> the opposite end. And you're like, no, motherfuckers, dude, I want, I need resolution. You're like, ah, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta watch, you gotta read this whole thing now. Ah, you have to read those drummer chapters. No, yeah. but it, but it. <laughs> <laughs> but it but it never to me it never felt uh like a like a bad cliffhanger where you're like oh my god you know what i mean like the, the chapters in between were also really good it's just that they managed to just stretch that drama but through those few chapters but also I and when you say and when you say that it's accessible that it was easy to read yes because i was scared because i like each book there's not a single book is lower than 550 pages right they, these they're all be you know, yeah they're, they're all be boy. between 500 and 550 and like 620 right like they're chunkers mm -hmm. um but never at a ne not a single spot through the whole story did I was I like dying like it was such a quick fly especially when the action started happening you're like like especially you Andrew <laughs> well and 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 it's like it's it for me personally I feel like it's kind of hard to understand action in a book mm -hmm. you know because like action. Mm -hmm is a much more visual thing, but the way they, the way they will write it, 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 it's very clear to see. And also I love how some of the, the writing sentences or like, or like their sentence structure 
uh, like for uh, what's I'm looking for? Not foreboding, but um, foreshadowing, where it'll, where it'll be like, oh, uh, three hours before the catastrophe happened, <clears throat> this is why, and you're like, oh fuck, and so it's just mm -hmm. it, it immediately once the chapter starts, you know something bad's gonna happen. So they, you know, they they know what they're doing. Like these these yeah. two guys, they knew what they were doing, and these um, I don't know if this is going to be like in the same vein of like Dune or something like that, because Dune has just like this massive influence or something. But this is almost almost, almost mythical. Yeah, yeah, Dune, yeah, Dune almost collapses under the weight of itself at some points. Yeah. Um, but this was just a awesome, fun, emotional romp through parts of the galaxy and it, and it actually the way the story progresses the scale of it is so much so that at the end of it you're like holy crap the first book was so small but yeah <laughs> to the to the you know big you know yeah. big epic conclusion of it when they, when they call it the expanse it's for a reason <laughs> and you're just like wow they they really did go this far you know like yeah because we were what was it we were talking about points of use or something and i found somebody who actually did a spreadsheet breakdown of like the points of use like all the characters how many points of view they get for a book and stuff like that the first book had two points of view two points of views yep two and, and, and like like and like a couple small ones just here and there like in the beginning and then at the end, i think but it was mainly just two did, two points of view did the end yeah there was like yeah, I know. I, 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 I remember the prologue had one, but I, I don't. I don't remember the ending chapter did have one. But um, yeah, two points of views, and then the second book had three points of views, I think. Yeah, three points of views, and then it just kind of built on there. But it never got to the point where it was um, confusing. You know, yeah. like it never. No, got, never. It never got to the point where like un like. I love the A Song of, of Ice and Fire series, but there are some times where I'm like, wait, who's that person again? And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, because they were introduced like three fucking books ago and 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 they they were important, but they were also minor. So this never felt like- So the, yeah, so the first book had uh, one from Fred Johnson, which I think was the first one. No, it was in the middle that, of the book. That was the- And then one from- No, no, Fred Johnson was and the one, end. Oh, and then one from Julie Mao. That was the beginning. The very beginning. Yeah. 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 And then it was, as I said, just James Holden and Miller. Greatest! Oh man, that book was so good. I in fact, I didn't tell you this, but I kind of want to go back and reread it. I do too. Like the minute I, the minute I was done, I was like, I kind of want to like. I like, and we'll get and I'll, and we'll get into why specifically towards the end. I do too but, because mainly I want to see what little seeds were planted very early on, and also just be like, oh, remember when this was the biggest problem that they were facing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Um. Okay. So, yes, the expanse, excellent. Very accessible, very easy to read. If you're not a big reader, I'm not a big reader. I'm super slow, and I got through all nine books like no problem. The most problem I had was just scheduling conflicts, like mm -hmm. life stuff. But like when I, once I sat down to read, it was just chapter to chapter to chapter. But also, no stuff. also because I think you were the one that said that the uh, one of the original authors was like a GM for a game or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can tell they bring that adventuring spirit into the novels. So if you're like an aspiring GM or and you want to like up your game, like pull stuff from this because yeah. this just has like like just quests yes. and crap and whatnot and mechanics. Yeah, <laughs> so many yeah. mechanics. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get to uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to play Starfinder. Don't worry, one day. We will. We will get the play Starfinder, <laughs> and there will be thrust gravity. I am going to homebrew that shit in there, okay? None of this, artific Fair. None of this artificial gravity. No, 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 no. All right, that's for sissies. <laughs> right. you, you you roll for strokes. Yeah, I'm sorry. You had a floating rib? Guess what? <laughs> I need you to make a death save. <laughs> oh, wait, you're saying 5 b You're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, so... I recommend this book to anybody who even is remotely interested in sci-fi. Yes. No, oh, yeah. And with that, yeah. And, and with that, let's start getting into the discussion questions. They're spoiler-free discussion questions. Andrew. At the end of the book. <laughs> 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 All right. So the first question is, and, and I want to thank our, our, our AI overlords for these. Because we're not smart enough to actually come up with these questions. But here we go. Which character do you think is the most interesting and why? Okay, I want you to answer that question for me. I have to say, and it didn't, it wasn't 
it, I, maybe because like I have the last book so fresh in my mind. I don't know, but I think one of the most interesting one, which it wasn't to me in the beginning, was actually just James Holden altogether. Really? Because in the beginning, he was just, you know, the hero. But then his development was, especially the last two, two or three books, two or three books, whatever, one of those. There was such a cyclical nature to him. Okay. No, that's 360. I'm sorry. 80, 180 degrees to him. (laughs) <laughs> to an extent <laughs> that I don't know I just find it very very interesting towards the end and I think that's only because I have the last book so fresh in my head right now. okay hold on how about you I think okay so we all know um I love Miller <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Miller <laughs> so I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make this I'm gonna challenge myself besides Miller <laughs> who do I think is the most interesting character and I would actually it's to me I know you went with James Holden but to me it's actually kind of a tie between Alex or Naomi oh really I thought you were going to say somebody else the, Bobby the, the 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 Naomi that we know in the beginning of the story is a completely different person from the Naomi that we know at the end of the story whereas 100%. whereas Alex he kind of more or less stays the same and <laughs> not no 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 hold on hold on kind of more or less stays the same in a kind of tragic way where like yeah. things are happening around him and he's just kind of not like off on the sides and he can't do anything but he's just like sort of witnessing the stuff happening and yeah. and like and because there's no real massive change for alex it's like it's like the world shifts around him, and so he kind of gets like I don't want to say left behind, but things change around him, you know. He was like the only he was like the only constant. Yeah, and 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 because because he's like the rock in the stream of the expanse, he slowly gets eroded by the waters. You know, you get what I'm yeah. saying. But he's still yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Who did you think I was gonna say? <laughs> Sorry, my dog is going crazy. Uh, I, I knew you were gonna say. Honestly, I knew you were gonna say. I, I, knew, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Alex. Right. Uh, but I thought you were gonna say Bubby. I but. I felt like no no no. I. Mm, mm. No, I felt I felt that. Bo- Don't get me wrong. I didn't feel like Bobby was a two dimensional character, but I felt like she was able to adapt to the yeah. scenario. I'm trying really hard to keep it spoiler free. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but because she was so so adaptable to the scenarios around her, I'm not saying it didn't make her interesting, but there wasn't really conflict that came from her internally after the first book, kind of. Um, okay, yeah. yep. You know what I'm saying? She just became, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, and we can probably exp- we can probably expand on that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question: How does the science fiction setting of the Expanse in- impact the storytelling? I have my answer, but I wanna. I let's see. How does the science fiction setting of the expanse impact the story? Okay, because it is it's fictional enough to where like kind of like, you know, the, the magic stuff happens, you know? Mm-hmm. Um the whole what's it sub the uh, subsequently advanced technology is akin to magic kind of deal, but it's just grounded enough to where there are stakes um with things such as like transportation like there's no faster than light transportation you actually have to get from one place to the other um yep. at the cost of bodily risk or you know yep. potential um something like that um jose made a joke about uh, having a stroke and that's because if you go too fast in space and you and like the juice is bad or you don't have good enough juice or something like that you you will stroke out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because- no even even with the best juice they mentioned it a couple of times where like they're in the middle of action. They're like, you know, what are the chances of one of the crews have already had a stroke or something? Yeah. Or every time somebody makes a noise, they're like, oh my god, they have a stroke. Yeah, and and it's just a thing. It's just a, it's just a thing that might happen, especially the older you get, the 
more is gonna happen in the in the float. But I mean, like, but like there is. Or on the burn, I'm sorry. But like there is a. Uh... There is machinery like the auto dock where like you literally just plug yourself in. Oh, okay, here's what here's what's wrong with you. Blah 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 blah. But then it's like, oh, you have cancer. Forever. There's no cure. Sorry, there was never a cure for cancer. Um Yeah. <laughs> even in the future. Yeah, it's the year four thousand, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and so I I think I think it did a really good job also having the like physical space play play a huge part of it and especially especially in like the kind of the, like the finale of the series where mm -hmm. where where you start to understand physical space plays a huge part <laughs> because like what's it we're we're talking this isn't something where it's like oh okay we'll just we'll just fade to the next scene and we're already there like no 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 months have passed just trying to get from one place to the other because yep. we have yet to know acquire fast and yep. light travel and so and so while you were gone those past months while you were gone this has happened and it's not good or you know something like that so it, yeah 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 i think i think it's they did such a great job at making the science so believable and giving it so much character that like i said earlier it became its own character in the books mm -hmm. it it was i feel like a lot of sci-fi or science fiction movies out there the science the science on it is get overpowered by the fiction like you said right. spaceships just are just standing there no problem gravity. going at yeah going at you know faster than light travel and then they get there from one planet in another galaxy to one planet in another galaxy and the time hasn't skipped you know they can still call home and like there's no problem like they miss a lot of chances it's like a like okay it kind of like, reminds like, me it, like when you're in D, D and something bad happens in the story and mm -hmm. you use that to build the story even further yeah instead of just like oh that's bad we don't like it let's just erase it yeah fail it was kind of like that like failing they, forward yeah yeah they they just grab all these challenges and made them part essential parts of the story beats yeah throughout but i everything. mean but I, I think i the one thing i really like is how they handle the real how realistically they handle traveling like you know using yeah. thrust and whatnot because no spoilers, but I saw the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie last night, and there was a part where they were they like kicked off like fa their faster than light drive while they were standing around walking around the ship. I'm like, no, yeah. these people should be paced on the wall, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's I I I there was something something spoke to me about like uh like the 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 scale of it. Where it, where it was like, no, 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 it, we are going to be taking off. You need to be in this impact gel couch or else you are going to start breaking limbs or like, you you know, like, like start having strokes or something like that. But then also like that, like whenever there's space combat, <laughs> like Alex be like, oh, we got torpedoes moving in. How far away are we? We got about only like an hour and a half. I'm like, wait a second, hold on. An hour and a half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that just kind of, that, that just kind of shows you just how big, like, how fast yeah you know? exactly you know yeah. because yeah. now you're right there have been even moments where like they mentioned that the crash catch is not big enough or something and even if it, like one of their pinkies get off the ledge it can like crack yeah and, stuff like that. and it's like things that you don't think about but i just i it's i i i like the i like the idea of like because you think of combat like aerial combat you're thinking of something like uh like modern day like jet fighters or something like that or something like star wars were like really close mm -hmm. by but this is like no no no. they're shooting torpedoes and the torpedoes takes hours to get there so you have to line up your pdcs and stuff and yep. so it, and it's just like kind of like a slight like faint within faints like no no, no okay we got to do something to counter their counter and blah Which, blah there were plenty of moments with that writing was so good mm -hmm. <laughs> and, ugh, yeah we're gonna get into that <laughs> yeah because i mean it, it's just it just kind of it, it was it was kind of humorous because later on there's a chase <clears throat> i'm not gonna say against who but like because of the because of the chase you think one is right on the tail of the other but no it's like they're like four hours away or something like that and the character's like oh shit they're right on my ass like, <laughs> you know, like you can't even see them you can't even they you yeah you know like like maybe you can like I identify their drive plumes or something like that yeah <laughs> I, I, suppose. I don't know it's just something about that that's you know it like 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 they would think like modern day aerial combat's like claustrophobic yeah or something. Yeah, yeah no uh, no you have months <laughs> <sighs> All right, next next question. 
what are some of the major themes that are explored throughout the series? I mean, one easy one that just pops into my head right away is colonialism. 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 Co co try that one again. Uh, co 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 colonialism. Colonialism. Class politics co is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Class. Colonialism. Like, like, like in the first five books, I think it is. Class politics plays a big part. Actually, mm -hmm. six. First six books, class politics plays a huge part in it. Um, colonialism. You're right about that. Uh. Western TV. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> yeah, that I mean that well that's colonialism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I guess I guess like frontier, like just Front, yeah, kind of. yeah, 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 yeah. Um let's see, major what are some major themes? That is actually a very good question, and I probably should have read these questions beforehand since I play near Automata. Uh <laughs> unbelievable. No, I mean, those are the, those are, well, those are the major ones because it's it's I love it how it is described that like even though, I mean, they're all freaking humans. They all came from the planet that, yes, it was overpopulated, but like, they're all we're all the same, right? Well, they colonized. They colonized Mars. Mars had a Mar Mars had a rebellion, and now they're their own entity. And then they're like, and then Mars is like, okay, well, we hit it col 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 uh, being colonized. Let's colonize those people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like a cyclical thing that kept happening over and over again until something broke it. And well, and broke it. I think yeah. Um, I think another kind of like minor uh theme would probably be like m like moral greatness because there are there are some characters introduced later on where like are are these bad people or were they just yeah. good people thrown into a bad circumstance you yeah, know plenty, plenty, plenty of that obviously family there's like a lot of like uh, uh themes of family both like uh biological and families that you mm -hmm. make in, you know, it's based in life that are not but there's also like a very strong there's actually a very strong underlying theme of just independence where like people want to be independent of one thing and um and then later on uh like like a sort of independence and like a sort of a galactic sense um can't really get into that without spoilers unfortunately but but like but like from book one all the way to book nine, like independence kind of plays a theme where if, you know there's somebody vying for a sense of independence or something like that. Yep. Um, also, also uh, themes of not, I'm not work. I'm not looking for the word cult. What's the word I'm looking at? Charismatic leaders being 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 um, like 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 a cult of personality, maybe. Yeah, cult. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cultic personality. Um, also. Um, there's, there's so much, but I think those are the major ones because those are repeated throughout. Like, um, like, re like, oh, uh, like oppressed people being, um, capitalized on or being Col colonial colonialism. Yeah, kind of, but it's also, but it, but it's like the counter colonialism to like the worst, like possible sense. Um, you get, you get like kind of a. A sense of that in the fifth book is that a really bad sense in the last couple where like you know like oh hey we're gonna counter this this culture and it like just sort of breaks everything um yeah. again mm, kind of hard to get into that without spoilers <laughs> but <clears throat> all right all right next question how does the expanse compare to other works of science fiction you've read I... this is gonna be easy for me because i haven't read too many same like little Literally, the last one was just Dune. <laughs> Dune, Messiah, Children of Dune, and Emperor. I, and I can already have my, my, my answer to that. I I actually was um, a little worried reading it. And this is going to sound kind of stupid. Hear me out here. I'm not trying to sound like a snob or something. Okay. But um, the Expanse series, it's episodic. Uh, some of it's episodic. There's like, I think there might be one book where... Aside from some details, you could probably just pluck out and it won't, won't really have a major effect on anything. Um, but it's episodic. You kind of know who's going to be safe and who's not going to be safe. Like, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, there's, yeah, there, you, there's a yeah. fair amount of plot armor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but A lot, actually. Now that I think thinking back. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's okay, because it was really fun. And, like, it was in... Well, I mean, it also it also kind of gave us an idea of 
like okay these characters are going to be important later on um but what's it but then but then when you gave me that video breakdown and it was like nominated for a bunch of a bunch of awards like okay so this isn't just a guilty pleasure like sci-fi you know because like because like i'm expecting when you get into sci-fi you expect something either like really heady or something really like you know like not so subtle commentary on current events <laughs> you know yeah. kind of a thing um but this didn't feel that way this just felt i mean granted it did have a message to say it's not to you know it's not to say it was just baseless or anything like that but it was also a kind of like fun romp you know through yeah. space you know um so i i don't know like i i felt kind of indicated knowing that it was nominated for a bunch of awards and actually did win a couple of awards i'm like okay whew, it's not just me <laughs> right 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 yeah for me it was mainly i came from dune messiah children of dune and emperor dune and if you read or know anything about the frank harbert writing style it is slowest of the slow burns let me tell not i wouldn't say super dry but it's it could it could be pretty dry. No, there's some flavor. Let me tell you. I tried to read Dune Messiah the day after I finished Leviathan's Fall, and it, it was like someone pulled an e-break in my brain because <laughs> I'm like, wow, I can't follow this, and I feel yeah. dumb for it. But that's only because I'm just so used to the kind of like fluid writing style of James S. Corey, the yeah. James S. Corey team. Yeah. Just like, also, also, like getting back you went from watching like John Wick to like going to like Schindler's List. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know it, what I mean? It, it, where it, it, so, so like Frank Herbert's like blinking you miss it kind of writing. I'm like, okay, you're not going to knock out 150 pages in a day, Andrew. You're going to have yeah. to, <laughs> like, those days are behind you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that comes into like, I didn't read 150 pages in a day. I'm just kind of like giving an example. <laughs> the, 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 ease, the ease of read, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is very easy. Like you said, you turn on the TV, it's a good show, it's a good book, you know, you read it, you have fun through it. It has a lot of messaging, uh, a lot of message uh, and value to it, but it's not doing levels of like, oh, you can study this text. So you can like really like, you know, dive into each one of the words and like find meaning to all. Yeah, it's, it's the expense is not like that. It's a surprisingly casual read that if you read between the lines, there's a lot going on there. Like, there's a lot to yeah. dig in, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. What are your thoughts on the overall pacing and structure of the series? It's, it's garbage. Um, <laughs> Trash. <laughs> no, I thought I, I thought the pacing and structure of the series was very natural. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I the, the first, again, the first book compared to the, compared to the later on books is so... The conflict is so small by comparison, but that's only because we don't have the perspective that we do in the last book. Um, and I like how the first four, the first four books, it's just like, okay, this is happening. This stuff is happening. Okay, this is natural. Yeah. This feels natural. Then the fifth book comes, and wham! Just everything gets thrown out the fucking window. And you're like, okay, yep. hold the fucking phone. <laughs> yep. And and like and and now now we're now we're we're running. We're panicking. Things are happening. Things are blowing up, and it just does not stop until the end of the series. <laughs> like the May, maybe in Persepolis first half. But like, I mean, but like, but like, the fifth book starts a domino, uh, starts a domino effect that we do not see the end of until the final, like, book, um, yeah. because like the first four books were kind of more episodic in nature. There were things that happened in the previous novels that had effects um, on these novels, but like, I felt like the first proper arc started in the fifth book. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then, it, and then it kind of just had a bigger scale from there. Because like yeah, I, I, I guess because like the fifth and sixth well no because like the fifth and the fifth and sixth book had a minor arc but that was only something that happened on because of something much larger that was happening in the back right 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 you right, know right. where where, where yeah, I, can, I, can, I can get behind that where it's like up until that point up until that point you kind of had like okay these are heroes this is a villain all right the villain got taken care of and they got shipped off to prison or arkham asylum or what the fuck have you um but now it's just like no these are the ba these are the big bads you know yeah so i think i think the pacing is perfect for an easy read yes um and not easy as in like oh there's no big words here or the word count is low easy as in like it's so well written you don't even notice it 
I, you know, it's like, it's, it's one of those books. I, there, there has been multiple times where I will look at the page count and be like, oh God, I'm actually this, this far away from finishing the book yeah. or what have you. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think story-wise, uh, not a single moment was I like, wondering where this was going. Mm -mm. The minute I was like, hmm, this is weird. Where is, oh, there it is. Like it, 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 it like it gave you, it, it, it put, um, uh, clues and hints early on and then it, it, it makes it all click mm -hmm. and then the action starts happening it's very well written you know because even with dune for as much as i love that book there were like chapters that you were just like what's happening yeah. what's happening and yes there was payoff to that but it was still like what is happening like um, like even even some of even some of the chapters i felt like weren't necessary it still contributed to it yeah whereas yeah. Like there, okay. To give you a good example of the opposite of this, have you read Have you read the novel The Godfather? Nope. Okay, so there's a side character in the novel The Godfather, who was like Sonny Corleone's mistress, and for some reason we get her story, has absolutely no impact on the main story, but for some reason the author's like, I'm gonna tell her story, and you're like, okay, cool. No impact. Yeah, there was there was there was nothing like that. Yeah, sure. yeah. Thankfully, there was yeah. nothing like that here, or 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 at the very least, if you felt like there wasn't going to be anything later on, they connect it, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to two, what do you think of what do you think about the way the series portrays politics and power struggle? Sadly, very realistically. <laughs> I was I was gonna say very realistic. Yeah, it, it's it's very. There wasn't a moment, there wasn't a single moment to the story, even when the good guys won or there was a resolution or whatever, that I was like, oh, okay, this is this is the bright new future. No, it was always like, wow, this is the best of, yep. of the shit show. Like that's Guess what? Shitty people in power stay in power yeah. and good people, yeah. good people under the boot heel stay at the bottom of the boot heel. You know, like there's yeah. no, there's, there's no like champion for the belt that comes and frees the belt or something like that like nope guess what it, mm -hmm. it's it's just shit all the way through it's mm -hmm. the whole, there were many times when i was like just just talk to each other you're both on the same side just talk to each nope. other <laughs> nope. no 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 Pol you don't understand politics <laughs> that's not how politics work <laughs> no we have to be purposely obfuscating and look at my big lawyer speak and blah like shut the fuck up mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a bigger enemy out there anyways uh but yeah it's sadly very realistic very infuriating because of that but yeah like it's, 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 it was well written i think i think the second book handles that a lot better to the point where you're just like wait hold on okay hold on who's not who's the good guys here wait who's the good guys and who's the bad guys okay he's bad yeah. he's bad he's on the good guy team but he's okay well hold on you yep. have to like draw like a, yep. you have to do like a pepe sylvia style diagram yeah <laughs> Right. Yeah. How does the expanse handle questions of morality and ethical dilemmas? I think this we kind of touched upon this early on, but it's never that was a good decision. This is the best outcome for everybody. It's it's the best outcome possible. I mean, like, but this is necessarily the best decision. I mean, like, the thing about it is, and we'll we'll probably get into it further. But even like in the last book, I'm like, ah, he kind of has some points. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, and actually, well, yeah, well, well, yeah. Like there, there are, there are very. The first book is maybe the first, and maybe the fourth book, are probably the biggest examples of cut and dry villains. But even then, they're like. Mm. <laughs> yeah, even even in the first book, there was a moment where it was like, okay, he's starting where, to where, a, where, yeah, where a shot was taken for a reason. Yeah, and you didn't quite, you know, yeah, agree with it, but it was, and, and, yeah, it's, and and, and and it was just like, okay, this guy's making sense. That's why he's dangerous. <laughs> it's because mm -hmm. he's making mm -hmm. sense. So I mean, like, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are villains in this in this series. Um, there's, all, there's actually only one person I will say is a out and out villain, like no redeeming qualities whatsoever. But the rest are just like, maybe the circumstances were different. You know, yeah. it, it could it could have been like you could have used your powers for good instead of evil. Yep. <laughs> you know. Yep. yep. All right. What are some of the key key relationships between characters that stand out to you? Um, I mean, literally anybody. In, Rosin, the Rust, the Rosinante crew. Literally anybody in the Rosinante. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think actually, what's it? 
I like the idea that what's it? Um, Amos's relationship is kind of just anybody that on on the rest of Anti, where like Naomi's like you, where Naomi's talking to Holden, he's like, you do realize that he's using you as a mor as a moral compass, and Holden's like, what are you talking about? He's like, Amos is following you because mm -hmm. you're in charge. But he knows that you'll make the right decision. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't yeah. trust himself <laughs> to, lead, yeah. to make his own decision. So he's going to follow your lead. <laughs> yeah. I think another relationship that was, I think, very endearing throughout in that weird way was, um, was uh, Bobby and Abbasarala. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Complete polar opposites. But they're so strong, so headstrong but that's, in their own ways. But but that, that, it works so well. It worked too well. But that's what made it. That's what made it kind of refreshing for at least for Avasarala because she's like, oh my god, finally someone that could just speak their fucking mind, and I don't have to like see the faint within. Play all these within fucking games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and 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 Bobby was able to use her or not use but you know capitalize off their relationship with the boss of all would be like okay i can actually make a difference for the good of the martian people you know yeah so it, yeah a very a very interesting uh um relationship there i thought you were going to say alex and bobby <laughs> you're coming to your dog oh my goodness this is my sister's dog <laughs> oh is that a boy or a girl girl oh she's the best girl <laughs> all, all, all dogs are best girls. Um, My next dog is going to be named Must, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that was a good that was a good relationship, Bobby and Amasarala. Um Obviously, everybody under Russ and Ante. Um, Okoye and Faye it's another later later characters but they're just so good for each other. It, it's hard not to love them. It's, it's, it's a good married couple because like be because they understand the idea that there is a certain amount of annoying you can bring to a relationship <laughs> intentionally be annoying <laughs> so, yeah just to break that tension at, at least a little yeah, bit yeah um, yeah but uh yeah Ak Akoya and Fez is a good one um oh man what what's another I mean, obviously, the the easy answer would be like Naomi and Jim, but oh yeah, I mean, because that yeah. <laughs> can't get into that one either, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, um, because we're already forty minutes in. Yeah. How does the series balance action and the ca and character development? I think kind of perfectly. I think I I think that. <laughs> Oh, she wants to be part of the show. <laughs> oh, muskrat. Get down, muskrat. Down. <laughs> uh, if I go to heaven, let it be for spoiling dogs and children. <laughs> 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 but I think I, what I like is that when they write action, um, characters don't just like fall into a default, like, you know, like, action mm -hmm. hero thing. Like, no, like things like... <laughs> like flaws start coming out like one one of the action scenes i think in the second book is because one of the characters is not an action hero yeah. <laughs> and he reads the situation wrong and just blows everything up for everybody i forgot about that yeah um it's a pizza party man <laughs> get to the fucking ground <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so great, honestly. I forgot about that. Man, Prax. But <laughs> Prax, you are the dumbest genius on Ganymede. You know <laughs> um but no, but like but like you start you like the idea is that when act action is pressure, right? And and when the pressure starts to get applied on these characters, you, that's when you start to see the real them happening. And yeah. sometimes it's sometimes it's humorous, like Prax. Sometimes it's scary, <laughs> like Amos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, Amos can be very scary real quick. Yeah, but like you start to see the real them under you know under these action circumstances. I've, and I, I think that's when you know you can you can have all the pithy dialogue and whatnot all you want, but um, when the rubber hits the road and things start like the bullets start flying, that's when you see the real characters. I think that's when that's good characterization. And action balance, you know. Yeah, for sure. 
And then the last question for the non-spoiler is overall impressions. We we, we kind of already talked about it earlier on, and would you recommend it? Absolutely, hundred percent. Yes. Even if yeah, even if no, even there's if there's no question about it. Even if you're not a sci-fi person, um, or maybe you want to get into sci-fi and you want to dip your toe into it, I think this would be a good entry series. Perfect. Even if you read just the first book, because the first book is very well. It's just that's it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it ends. There's a bit of like a bit at the end. You're like, oh, maybe I want to read more. But also, if, like just. Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if you, if you just read the first one, you'll be all set. But also, not only that, like, it doesn't follow one genre. Like, every book yeah. is kind of a different genre. Um, like, yeah, it's sci-fi, but there's subgenres that... There's theming to each one of them. Right. It's not just like, oh, space. Yeah, like, like, like you can tell you can tell the authors had a little bit of fun writing this. They're like, oh, this one's going to be a noir. This one's going to be like yeah. a like an action. Cowboys. Or like a disaster yeah. movie. Yeah, this one's Space Cowboy. Bow! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> what? Tarnation? <laughs> Fire. Yeah. <laughs> Firing the rail gun. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Okay. All right, so now so, so now we're getting into spoiler talk. So if you don't yes. want to, if you don't want if you don't want to be massively spoiled on this, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So uh, make sure if you're gonna if you're gonna drop off here right now, make sure to follow us uh, on Instagram and in all social medias. Um, we release these episodes on YouTube and anywhere you listen to your podcast on. Um, thank you for listening for the non-spoiler part of this uh, show. But now we're moving to. Let's talk about that ending! <laughs> oh my god! Are we actually gonna talk about the ending? <laughs> yeah, we are, but but let's go through oh, okay. some of the questions because it took us like 40 minutes just to get through, through I'm, the first one. Hey, look, you know what? We haven't recorded an episode in like four months, all right? I think I think the listeners are due for a little bit of extra content, you know what I'm saying? All right, you're right, you're and, right. Uh, and, and you can subscribe to our Patreon for uh, hundreds of unused fo uh, uh, audio that we did. <laughs> it's, ma it's mainly just Andrew going. <laughs> we have three collections of that. It's three and a half hours of just Andrew breathing heavy into a mic while somebody else is talking in the background. And because he doesn't know how to mix his own audio, you can actually hear them talking through his headphones. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's a new genre of music. <laughs> All right. Someone would pay so, for that. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? Probably. Yeah. There's at least right. one and, person. Anyways. Spoiler territory. Let's go. Let's dive this deep into this. Okay. Which character do you think had the most interesting story arc throughout the series? I honestly think it's a tie between yeah. Jim and, and Naomi. Only because, like, you see, they have almost a reverse trajectory. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, especially in the last book. Yeah, you're right. Like, like Jim is just like kind of like larger than life, charismatic. Like, like he he is a sexy person. Like, he is legitimately a sexy person. Like, 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 like people yeah. like even like like in the fourth book, even Elvie's like, oh, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> you know? Where fans, which which where, which they don't anywhere, but cool. To, to the point where fans is like, you need to get laid. Yeah, yeah and I'm right here. <laughs> what a fucking Chad move, anyway. I know, and it worked. They got married. <laughs> God. But yes, no, I I agree because you're right. Holden, without even trying, in the first book, just becomes this symbol of like rebellion and freedom and you know all this yeah. bigger than life stuff he, and then towards dude the last book killed me there were so many i get it it was written very well because he went through a lot of shit but like he was off like he was just turned off yeah he he, he becomes this he starts as this larger than life like idealistic like oh i can change things just by broadcasting and stuff you know how many times in the last two books i was like He's gonna he's gonna broadcast it. He's gonna broadcast. He's gonna tell everybody what's happening. He's gonna like nope. where's Holden? Holden, where are you? Yeah, he's not he's not Holden. That's why they call him Jim in the Jim. last book. Because like yep. he but because by by the time of the last series, he has gone through so much trauma, so much warfare, and like actual torture and imprisonment. He is a broken individual. Yep. Like to the point yep. where it's like did Jim, besides those like last couple chapters of the book, did Jim actually contribute anything to the overall? No, that that's what was killing me. Other than like maybe being like keeping trees that kind of like, like on you know on, on, on tap or not even on tap, just kind of like distracting her from the bigger things that were happening. Right. 
he was not doing anything until like the very last like what like like, like 10 chapters yeah. not even yeah you know i think so yeah and it's like it's like it, it, and what's it Persep was it persepolis rising where laconia invades yeah persepolis. okay okay because i'm, I'm kind of getting my okay so in persepolis rising there's a moment where bobby like holds a grudge against holden because he can he he can right. he can just open doors just by being him yeah oh yeah the persepolis rising holden versus the leviathan's full Ball, Holden is two totally different Holdens because he's broken. And that's, and that's he's, only three books. That's only three books, and 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 three books, and I think like what five years difference. Yeah. So so. so in those five in those, in those five years, like like it, it, Persepolis Rising Holden probably could have just retired and been okay, and he would and he would still be him and cheerful and charismatic and you know probably not so idealistic, but he'll have a bit of a spark in his eye. But now he's just he's just a sad old man, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. who's got who's got just enough stupid in him for one last like oh, one last ride. <laughs> like I knew the whole time something was gonna happen, and the minute he stepped out of the room with my with not without Naomi, I'm like, oh, oh, I know what he's going. And because the whole time I was thinking, just put my brain was like, just put a piece of uh, just put a piece of. Um, for a molecule on, on your ship like before you know that could help it and he just uh one one last stupid act and 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 it was and i think what made that even more heartbreaking was that it wasn't there wasn't a fight like him and naomi didn't fight over that part they she she just knew like you're gonna do something if you're gonna do it can you at least wait till i fall asleep you know and, it, and it's just like this weird like really sad understanding of like a relationship where she knows in her heart of hearts, Jim has to step up and become James Holden one more time. And, and she's just going to have to accept that. And there's also like that, like that kind of like that really heartbreaking moment where she's like, I, we had tried to pull him back and it took him being stupid and heroic, you know, to, to get the James that yeah. I fell in love with back <laughs> yeah, everybody everybody tried alex amos even Teresa tried all of them did like just to like not fix him but just bring him back on his shell mm -hmm. and what really took it was for him to just be the the wrong man at the right place at the right time mm -hmm. just 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 the person that just had no no regard for his own welfare yeah. and, and 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 he and he's aware of that he's not stupid he is aware of that he goes you know, I did this on Eris. I did this on the Agatha King. I did this on Eilis. This, this is just who I am. It's like I, I, I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. So it's got, it, it's, it's literally, it, it's got to be me. You know, yep. no one, no, no one else is gonna be able to do this. So. Yep. Um. So I deleted the politic question only because we kind of already answered that. Okay. Not, totally Anyways, but. The next question is, what are some of the major themes that emerge throughout the series, and how are they explored? Um, so, like we said already, colonialism, yeah. you know, uh, cult, cultists, personality, personality. What was the other one you said? Um, uh, independence. Political independence, political class. Uh, 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 class politics. Class politics um, through it, and man, I mean, the colonialism, simple from the get-go, is Mars and Mars and. Uh, Mars and Earth have all sorts of companies throughout the belt mm -hmm. before the, the rings open and all that. Uh, and even after that. Uh, and they're just capitalizing on the work of all these belters. Yeah. That's that's like the bare minimum from the get-go. That was just already established. That was well, it, it's, it, it kind of... It's really sad because it's like... Okay, Earth is capable of space travel. So they go to Mars. They co you know, colonize Mars... And now Mars is a as an Earth colony. Mars advances to the point where they can gain their own independence. And Earth is like, okay, fine. There was probably like a minor war or something like that. But like, all right, fine. You get your own independence. So then these two independent planets now start to capitalize off the Belters, who who eat, they do a really good job of describing that these people physically cannot become um, what's the word they call inners. They like they like yeah. it, they 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 they, are, 
Like if Naomi, who is a belter, tried to go on Earth, she would be racked with pain because her physiology will not allow her to live on Earth, at least not without like extensive like surgery yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So like you have these people that are from birth, like in a in, in a kind of a caste system. You know, and, and, and it does a really good job of showing how like the belters are getting by like um not like scrounging they're not rats but like well but 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 it remind me that and correct me if i'm wrong here but i think they only touched this in the first book but belters have to pay for their air and their water yep. constant air water food um, well yeah i mean food is a given though regardless but like the fact that they have to pay for the, the air that they use it's like a tax mm -hmm. you know that's like a huge huge thing that mars maybe have to do i doubt it but Earth doesn't have to do that. They don't even think about that stuff. No, and it, and and it's things it's like what we what we like take for granted, <laughs> um, like air pressure. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, you know, like 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 the belters have to uh, adapt to a much much different lifestyle, um, and it and it it I think I think it does a very good job of showing the resourcefulness of a people that are what's the one looking for they're not i mean they're kind of, they're pretty much the poverty class can we just say that yeah you know yeah. because because they 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 are just, they're living on like the stuff that's called like kibble you know and it's like mm -hmm. it's like very rare like like to the point where if someone brings cheese <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a block it's, of cheese yeah. is worth more than like uh, like like the spaceship that carried that cheese. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So, There's also uh, Colter's personality with Marcos Naros. Oh my God. Mar okay, so so when I said there was one clear cut villain, I was talking about Marcos. Marcos. Because they're they're like 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 even Dresden in the first book. Like okay, he's making points, which makes him dangerous. You know, yeah. and in the second book, you had like the the Martians that were, uh, like kind of vying for more political independence and stuff like that. Like, like you know, every book kind of had a villain that you can kind of understand where they were coming from. Marcos is just a clear cut pure bad person. You know, pure chaos. Because at first you were like, oh, okay, I get it. He's fighting for independence for the belt, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But then he started leaving, like. Uh, what was a uh, series like he left series without any food water or anything just left it with a bunch of people in it just just so they can slow down the uh the the the, the, the united nations yeah and, and and it's just and and it, it becomes very clear once you start to get to his pov chapters uh which are like the worst chapters in in terms of morality not like writing yeah but it's just like yeah. it like he he's no he thinks himself as a hero but he yeah. knows deep down in his heart, he just wants to cause chaos, as mm -hmm. far as the eye can see. And again, and he's so he's so so fucking charismatic. He's so charismatic, and he's so up his own ass. Like he mm -hmm. he starts to believe his own BS at the end, mm -hmm. you know. And I think I think the best the best part with Marcos is when he describes Fred Johnson's like, he's my white whale, blah, blah, blah. And one of his lieutenants like, you never finished that book, did you? <laughs> 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 and, 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 and it's just like, it, like, like Marcos and, and, and Aros is just a good example of like a dictator because like you have, he brings in all these people and he's able to like almost bring earth to, to heal, you know? Um, and Mars and stuff like that. But then, but then like his power, like cabinet, I guess for lack of a better term, like the people underneath him starts to leak out. But meanwhile, the entire time is like, nope, all part of the plan, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Like Mi yep. Michio Pa leaving. I knew she was going to do that. Don't worry. But it's it, yep. it just like, dude, you need to know when to quit. <laughs> yep. And he never did. And that's what got him to where he And that, that's where he- Oh wait, spoiler of the territory. He got fucking sucked by the, uh, by the dark powers or whatever. Dude, God got, dude got Dutchman. <laughs> Dutchman. And him and his whole fucking, um, uh, crew. Oh, uh, well, the crew, but uh, he had other ships. With him. Yeah. Yeah. His, his armada, uh, the, the free Navy, um, the free Navy. um, which, yeah. which honestly, it, that was one of those things where it's like, Marcos, there's a special circle in hell for you, but the rest of the belters, man, dude, 
I'm sorry, you know. Um, yeah. By the way, my I don't know. Did did you want to hear what my one criticism was? What? <laughs> Speaking of which, um, Philip never comes back. Yeah, I know. We never hear. I was just. We never I hear even, from I Philip. Wasn't even, I wasn't even expecting like a end of the Dark Knight, you know, uh, where they're sitting at the cafe and then she looks up and he's like sitting there with a girl or something. You know what I mean? Like it was nothing. And it, and and nothing. And it was just she mentioned it too, and I was like, okay, she mentioned it, so he's yeah, gonna come back yeah, yeah. She towards the end. she thinks Phillips is she thinks Phillips dead, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. we're gonna get some. Nope, she just goes on saying, and I wonder why. I don't know. I really don't know. And and the thing about it was is that my like my one true criticism is that I think later on the the story gets a little too insular, where it it becomes pretty much just the Rosinanti crew plus LV, you know? And it's like, it's like you had all of these memorable characters. Like, I think it would have been really cool if you had like, um, what's it? That section, the, the lighthouse and the watcher part where you had like multiple POVs. Like, I think it would have been, kinda, oh, yeah. I think it would have been kind of cool. Like near the end of the book, you had like a multiple POV thing. I'm just like these characters that you had built and like developed and stuff like like what's what's Bossia doing right now? What's what's Havelock doing right now? What's you know what what what's Anna doing right now? You know, um, obviously some of these POV characters are d -d 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 dead, <laughs> but you know like they're like it, it, I think it would just would have been interesting to just be like just kind of just just a, a little bit of a callback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but. I get it. I mean, it went from it started very small. It went to this grandiose, you know, everybody involved, and then back again into what originally was, which was the Russian Anti Group. Yeah. I kind of appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I know, but like, I, I just, I, I just would have, like, as someone that appreciates like the tertiary characters, I would, I would have liked a little callback. That's all. Um, yeah. Like I said, uh, like like kind of a nitpick, um, but oh well. I I wanted I, I I really I really thought he was gonna show up. At the end. Yeah. I really thought, even if it was like the prologue or something, mm -hmm. which we had to talk about the prologue. But you know, like it was just kind of like not there, not ever. And I'm like, wow, okay. Do they forget? Should we? Can I ask them? Yeah. Some of these, uh, I hate to say it, some of these spoiler questions are are the exact same as the spoiler free questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Damn it, chat GPT. Damn you, chat GPT. You've let me down again. But, um... Okay, so we were... Da, 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 da. What are some of the major themes that emerged throughout the series? How are they? I already did that one. Yeah. Uh, well, the next one, technically, is what are some of the ethical questions that are raised in this series, and how are they addressed? Do you just want to jump onto the big one? Hit me. Mind control. Becoming a hive mind to fight a bigger, better for the evil for animal. the greater good gold. for the greater good. Um, I mean that was that was. I mean, okay, so I'm torn because I get it. I, like you said earlier, Duarte, a bad guy technically, but he was just trying his best to save humanity. Like what? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, okay, okay. <sighs> you could. There are no morally good military leaders. Let's just kind of get yeah. that out of the way. <laughs> also, also, he was the guy who sent a fucking dark matter bomb through the gates just to piss off whatever was on the other yeah, side. Yeah, he's like, yeah, because of his <laughs> because of his experiments to see if they reacted. I'm like, let's just poke this bear. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah. And 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 it's like, but I. That the weird thing about it is, is that I feel like post, I don't know, coma. What what happened to Duarte? Post, I guess, yeah. Okay. Post coma Duarte is more heroic yeah. than pre coma Duarte. Because I mean, like when there there's a moment after the Watcher and Lighthouse section where people are like, no, Duarte saved us from being Dutchmen. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Like he actually held back the, the the dark gods or the others, yeah. You know, and so it's like, okay, that's actually kind of cool. Like you know, like I. Uh, uh, but did he or did he just need more minds? 
Well, no, but it it, it 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 describes how he was able to tap into all the people that were in the ring gates yeah. to push back, you know, because because when Holden tries to do it, he tries to do it without using people and it, it like it exhausts him, you know, yeah. so 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 him having to use people as like a sort of not, not a catalyst, but like, I guess, like a booster to like help push back these things. And that's and that's how you got like Tanaka and all these other people like uh, like Kit, uh, their their consciences are blurring in with others. Intertwined, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, and and even even Holden gets kind of seduced by it, where it's like mm-hmm. where it's like, can you imagine what would how humanity would be if we were to just stop all this bullshit and be laser focused on one thing at a time? And, yep. And, and what's it? What, what, there's there's a section of the book where it's like where it's like even even he thought it was beautiful or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and then he yeah. reach reach for the stars and create like you know a new future for humanity. Like it was for a second there, it looked like he was going to start controlling everybody's mind. And 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 the thing about it is is that you see the effectiveness, the effectiveness. Sorry, the effectiveness of a hive minded navy <laughs> because they destroyed that one mm-hmm. chip in like seconds mm-hmm. that was the most like 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 from a military point of view the most terrifying thing where it's just like these 20 ships just literally unload all their torpedoes and turns this ship into a small sun to the point where yep. to the point where alex is like i hope those people are dead <laughs> <laughs> because if not what awaits them is far worse yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah. I mean, what other? I know it's been a long series, but what other big uh, ethical questions were there? Well, it's like okay, so so when when Laconia starts invading, in uh, Persepolis Rising, and when yeah, in Persepolis Rising, when Laconia starts invading, the way they handle it is not exactly how you would expect an evil empire to handle an invasion. Like they're not coming in blitzkrieg style, mowing down, you know, towns and stuff like that. They're coming in and be like, okay, hey, look, we're gonna give you exactly one chance to surrender. We're we're gonna mm-hmm. do this nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, technically two chances because they attack and then they still were like, yeah, and we're like, okay, no, 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 we get it, we get it. You guys are independent. You've done your own thing. We respect that. It's been thirty years or so. Yeah. Okay, you got one more chance. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. You're gonna have to make me do this. It sounds abusive now when I say it, and that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, but it's just like they, the way Laconia handled their invasion was so like understanding. It's weird, <laughs> mm-hmm. like to the point where go- when Governor Singh um, orders Overstreet. Oh man, what was the second in command? Ten percent. Oh, no, Tanaka, the other guy. Yeah, oh. yeah, the, the guy that replaces Tanaka. When he's like, "No, I want you to slaughter these people," he goes, "Sorry, man, that's not how we do this in Laconia. We're supposed to win hearts and minds." <laughs> Shoot him in the face. Yep. Yeah, and 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 even even like Trejo in this like Matt, not Danny Trejo, uh, in this <laughs> Admiral Trejo. Oh yeah, he's in his book by the way. Yeah, Machete um, shows up in this book. <laughs> <laughs> As if you needed another reason to read it. Um, no Eva suit, no nothing. Just, ah, across the yeah. galaxy. <laughs> Man, that would be awesome. Um, no, but even Admiral Trejo is like, okay, look, I get it. You guys want to fight, but, you know, the moment you guys surrender, I'm going to withhold my end of the bargain. And he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's like, I mean... <laughs> He, he, yep. he was able to, like, immediately quash all the, like, like in a weird way, Laconia, like, united humanity. It was for a bad, you know, in a, right. in a bad yeah, way. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, you know, yeah. but, like, they were unified. For one beautiful moment, way, yeah. they were unified. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they have beautiful in quotation marks. Well, I mean, no, I'm talking about, uh, uh, but, you know, beautiful doesn't have to be good. <laughs> um, but, like, what's it? Uh, like, uh, uh oh god talk about morality hold on hold on hold on uh but like but like even in like sabola burn like murtry is a bad person yep. but he was also doing his job and it wasn't until shit really hits the fan that he became a villain yeah. spoilers howard 
<laughs> I hope you haven't gotten to this part yet. Um, because like, because like, I was like, I was like, I don't see the problem here with Mercury being on Eyeless at first because I'm like, he's doing his job. He took out Coop again. Big points in my yep. book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just you know what? Let me take care of this problem right now for you. Hold. All right, yeah. now we can talk. You know, and it and, and then it wasn't until later on that like, okay, this guy is obviously a villain, um, a very effective villain. Um, so I mean. Yeah, a lot of a lot of some darker than others, but a lot of morally gray villains in the series. A lot of it, yeah. yeah. Which I think it's made it very effective because if it would have been just bad guy after bad guy after bad guy, like obvious bad guy after bad guy, yeah, you're just kind of like, okay, cool, let's take this guy down. But like, but like who, Cl Clarissa Mao, I guess you can describe as the bad guy of Abaddon's Gate. I know Ashford's actually the villain, but nah, uh, <laughs> novel Ash. He was. He was. He was unaffected novel ashford was like like ha ha ha, ha pow, 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 villain you yeah. know we're like yeah. okay you're obviously crazy <laughs> yeah I, I i consider clarissa mao to be the actual villain of that story. Yeah. and even then it's because she has come from a really bad life even though she was privileged and rich you know like like you know just just because you have all the money in the world doesn't mean you're happy and yep. Clarissa is kind of like, you know, like she never had anybody. You, she never had anybody. And, 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 and it's even, it's even still later on in Persepolis Rising, she is still haunted by the fact that she portrayed like one of the few people that was nice to her, you know? And so it's like, yeah, she was the villain, but she had a redemption arc. She had a proper redemption arc, you know? So yeah, she did. For sure. Just a bit, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That whole relationship with her and Amos was so strange, weird. I think Amos, I think Amos is attracted to, not attracted. Uh, he, he gravitates towards vulnerable people that he can protect. But she didn't need protection. That was the thing. Like she could very much she, towards the end. She kind of needed it. Though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Near the end. But I think, but it's it's weird because I think Amos had to like. I think Amos recognizes, hey, this person is also a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and that's the thing, like, like Amos, if if he didn't have the Rosinante, he totally could have been a villain. Like, he could have been his own bad guy. And it shows, it, there are moments where Amos does things that Amos does to the detriment of the group. <laughs> you know? Just because yeah. he's Hey man, that's how I am. And then Bobby beats the fucking piss out of him yeah. for it. <laughs> I remember texting him like, Let, "Remind me not to ever mess with Bobby ever." <laughs> that's what I, I was. That's, Amos actually lost the fight, and it was the only person I could believe that Amos lost the fight to. <laughs> you know, yeah, Bobby. Yeah, because you text him, he's like, "Dude, the unbelievable will happen." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And then that. And then, I, then, they, then I got to that, like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think? What do you think about the way the series explores the relationship between humanity and technology? I like. I think it's very. Oh. No, no, go ahead. I think it, I think it's very interesting when it's. It's almost it's, it's I feel like a lot of sci-fi the technology becomes more than the humanity of it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not a human. You have lasers and things, and you're enhanced and all this stuff. Like, it can really easily fear into that but this one was a very realistic depiction of how technology can aid us get to where we want to go right whether that be like the the dock station the the the, the, the epstein drive uh or regrowing limbs and shit you know like that all still very like all magically magic sci-fi aspect of the sci-fi fantasy of it but it didn't overpower no. the the humans through the whole series. You know? Like, what was the most crazy like piece of technology that we saw? Well, I mean, besides the Epstein drive. Besides the Epstein drive. Uh, I I would honestly say like like being able to just regrow limbs to me kind of blew my mind. You know. Yeah. But like even then, even with the auto docs and stuff like that, like just like, oh, here's all this stuff that we can help you out with, like regrowing limbs and whatnot. There's still the trauma involved, mm -hmm. you know, yep. like and they, 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 and they never, they never took that away. Yeah. They, they didn't make an auto doc for your mind, <laughs> you know, 
like when when the falcon gets attacked by the outer gods or whatever you want to call them um and elvi gets a chunk missing from her leg and Phaeus loses a like a foot um and then later on when tanaka gets a bullet right in the face and it goes through her cheek and knocks out a bunch of stuff um like yeah okay whatever i can just regrow it that's fine but the mental damage is still yep. very much there you know yep. um and so and so it it, it, it shows, even though we have all these technological advancements, at the end of the day, we are still imperfect creatures. You know, like there are yeah. things that again. I mean, hell. Very squishy. One one of the one of the major characters dies because he's too old to handle space travel. You know, oh, yeah. and he 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 can't handle space travel as advanced age, and they have compromised uh, a juice. Juices. Yeah, Fred Johnson dies of a stroke. Like. The butcher of Anderson Bay dies from old peopleness. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. it's just. Yep. And then you have like somebody like Clarissa Mal who has her enhancing thing in her mouth that makes it super strong for a short period of time. But what happens right after she gets right after she uses it? She collapses. Yeah. She can't handle. Yeah, it. she gets. And what? What? Why? What, what was one of the main reasons why her not lifestyle, but her quality of life declined so much was because of that. Yeah. Was, it was a piece of technology in an imperfect way. Yeah, and I mean, they they describe it as an aftermarket implant. Yeah. And because of that, that, you know, like, it, it's poisoning her. It's killing her. And they can't remove it because it's it's in there. Like, you're just going to have to live with this now. So, yep. you know, so, so, so now she has to get, like, this dialysis done every two weeks because of it. And so it's one of those things, it's like in the uh, third book, when, it inter when they introduce it, you're like, wow, this is so cool. Okay, she's a little tired out. I get that. But then it shows, well, it's not all it's cracked up to be. 30 years down the line, it's, it's killing her. You know? Um, another thing I like is that it very much follows the idea that Alex had that once you start using a tool for so long, it starts to gain a soul of its own. Um, and it gets to the point where the Rosinante is its own character. Um, even though, even though it is a, it, it is a, by the end of the series, uh, like a forty years or something, thirty or forty years yeah, out of out of date yeah. warship with a bunch hasn't of, had <laughs> hasn't had an update yet, and with like a bunch of aftermarket parts, the fact that it's the Rosinanti can gather people around it, and that's how they were able to hold off the hive mind invasion on the ring station. Um, yep. Which, by the way, speaking of which, that last chapter with Alex broke my fucking heart. Um, just oh, I was sitting, I was, I was, I was reading in bed, and Chris was next to me, and I was like, I can't cry, I can't cry. <laughs> just, just like, like him. Like, I was tearing up, bro. And it, and it's like, and it's like the weird thing about it was, was that it was that it was like that right in a in a right at Redemption too. Mm -hmm. There's and 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 Alex finally gets the Rosinante all to himself. He can ride it wherever he wants. His dreams have come true. He has this amazing Martian Corvette. However, just like him, it's broken, it's battered, it's, you know, oh, puppy. Um, you know, it's broken, it's battered, it's having a little bit of trouble getting there, you know, and it's, and, and like the moment where he gets on the uh, comms and says, all right, if anybody's here, this is your last chance. I just had this like mental vision of his voice echoing through the empty halls and like the galley of the Rosinante. Because like somewhere deep in his mind, he knows there's nobody on the ship, but he wants there to maybe be somebody. Just kind yeah. of like one last fun romp, and yep. Yep. and there's like, again, again, like 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 the way to describe like the ghosts of everybody as he's like looking at the at the inside. Like it was it was so it was it was it was so well it, It's it's like it's like that kind of like finale moment in a show where it's like it's mm -hmm. taking place in one setting you get that one last mm -hmm. little like time lapse of like from the yeah. beginning of the end or beginning to the end rather um and there's a lot of people like online because i i looked up some discussions online afterwards because i had to have some kind of emotional catharsis <laughs> but <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> no, it's not your fault um but there was but there were some people saying like oh i don't think alex made it because there's a lot of alarms and blah 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 i'm like no dude no yeah. No, come on! Don't don't be such a Debbie Downer, Alex. Yeah. Alex, true to his like Martian, you know, uh, like Western sure. lifestyle, rode off into the sunset. You know, yep. just it was just on a on, on a horse that was just as much 
as broken and battered as he was. And I, I, yep. I like, yep. like that, was... that, that's the one that got me was the Alex chapter. <laughs> yep. It was like right before the last chapter too, the Naomi and Jim chapter. Mm -hmm. But he's just like, it was, just, it, was, it was the only point of view chapter with two point of views in it. Yep. And it, well, that was... But but it, uh, it it's just just him going like all right girl one last ride I was just like <laughs> you know God damn it Alex <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh -huh. yeah um all right last question what are your thoughts on the ending of the series and how do you feel about it as it wrapped up it's it was really sad <laughs> it was they nailed it I think they nailed the ending. There was no way this was gonna end with like everybody, okay? Oh, excuse me. And everything being fine dandy. It was like those last those last few chapters was just wrapping everything up into such a neat package. It was so so good. Mm -hmm. Including like the melancholy from Alex, the the you know, Naomi trying to make it to the soul system. You know, uh, Jim that trapped in the in the station. Not well, yeah, trapped. I guess technically, He's fighting for his fucking life just to give them the last bit of like it was. There was such a parallel with Miller. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was so. Well, like I was, uh, I was like having memories from Heroes. It was. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was so emotionally. Like it just grabbed me and like I couldn't put it down. Like I think I think one of the things that kinda one of the few minor things that kinda struck me was that Holden describes Miller as being younger than he remembers. And then that's when he then that's when he's like, Oh wait, no, that's just because I grew older past the point of when we knew Miller. And and that's when you kinda get that save and private Ryan moment. Yeah. <laughs> Where you just like yeah. age up real quick. Um yeah. But yeah, no, like, like, <sighs> Holden is kind of is the yin to Miller's yang, you know. Hold, uh, and 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 it shows throughout the entire series. Holden is idealistic. He's uh, 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 he's like, oh, not open minded, but you know, wide eyed, uh, charismatic. Whereas, and 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 he sacrifices himself, not because it's convenient. Or you know because he feels like he has to, but he knows this is the only way. Like like it it's it. He is not willfully going towards it, but he knows he's the only person that can that can do it, and he reluctantly steps into that hero position. Where <laughs> okay okay. Um, whereas Miller like in in the first book. He just kind of he just kind of figures oh the universe has like you know, not catered to him but the universe has conditioned him to be this the perfect person in this scenario you know like 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 even even when Holden goes and does like the final mission for him he doesn't want to like he wants to believe there is a way for a happy ending whereas Miller just accepts the fact I'm going to fucking die here you know <laughs> yeah. um uh, but yep. but I think and that's and that's and that's reflected at the end with uh, with Holden. He, he fucking knew. Yeah. Well, it, well, it's it's not that he knew. It's the Miller in his head knew. You know, he's like he, he which means that deep inside he knew. He knew. Like, he was. Yeah. He, he knew, but but he he needed a proto molecule based projection to be like you Tell. you know we're not getting out of this. <laughs> um, which by the way, let's talk about. Let's talk about how great it was for them to bring back Miller. I think it was such a like call. First of all, biggest callback fanfare. What do you what do you want to call it to the to the fans, mm -hmm. right? But also, it was thematically appropriate. Like it, they just managed to work it into the story that it didn't feel like something that was like, oh, okay, they're just bringing old characters back. Yeah. Better, it, you know? Yeah. No, right. it, it was like, all right, it worked the first time. It, let's yeah. let's hope it works this time, mm -hmm. and it kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> And, but almost didn't. Yeah, and, and then the fact that like he went to like take down Duarte. All right, 
You just want to talk about like the ending. Yeah. Like all together. You yeah. Want... Okay. All yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's just talk so, about so, the, so, so, so let's recap the, the last three books, right? Persepolis starts with the Laconian 30 years after. Mm -hmm. Laconians take over, uh, you know, just to kind of like skim through. Yeah. So third. Big revolution. Thir Holden gets captured by the Laconians. 30 years after the, the fall of the Free Navy, we finally discover who was behind Marcos and Eros getting the Martian warships. It was Winston Duarte. And he and he comes in with his uh, space marines, <laughs> yep. and they just yep. and they just start much. stomping ass left and right, <laughs> both violently and peacefully. Mm -hmm. Surprising, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, Holden gets captured. Uh, then a couple of more years pass, and Holden has been a dancing bear for the for the emperor of the of the emp of the universe, um, which just so happened to be getting injected for molecule in very small doses for like. The Past 30 years. Yep. So now he's almost become like a like a uh, like a like a god essentially. Um, I, I I I would safely say by the end of the series he is a god emperor. Yeah, he literally is a god emperor. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile the Naomi and the rest of the crew is with the underground hiding and doing like surprise attacks here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, Okoye is. Um, the, the science vessel trying to figure out what is this whole situation that is happening right now yep. with the creatures be beyond the rings a attacking, a attacking Okoye by the way is working with Laconia like she's right. like she's like all right these guys are gonna give me full funding like for all the my science stuff they gave her a state-of-the-art ship so she's she's working with Laconia working with not working for you know yeah so yeah she has like a very high uh rank yeah um in the in the science that trade or whatever they call it um yeah and then uh the first the first trigger was when trejo uh shot his super dark matter weapon against the soul system against uh, humans in the soul system where that weird bullet quote unquote thing from illus appear in his ship yeah and people were like what the fuck just happened oh and also they lost consciousness for like three minutes yeah crazy Every, not just them everybody in the soul system mm-hmm um, from there on, Duarte is like, oh, well, shit. And he starts, that's when he gets a call in, and then they start, like, doing all this research. They don't know what's actually happening. But instead of doing more research and figuring out a way to just make this not happen, Duarte is just like, let's just fucking poke that bear over and over again. I mean, Why not? I mean, it's a very, it's a very human mentality where it's like, hey, this is the... Especially military, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, human military, whatever you want to call it. But it's just like, hey, this is the biggest bomb we can think of. Surely this will stop the problem. Because we're not expecting Cthulhu to be on the other side of this. And yeah. Cthulhu's on the other side of this. <laughs> and they're just like, alright, motherfuckers, you guys want to play? We'll play. Boom! Knocks out the whole universe for like five minutes. God Emperor is reduced to a drooling moron. <laughs> yep, yep. And... And then from there on, like, all these uh, events are happening throughout all the systems. Oh, by the way, two of the rings just disappeared. Um, never explained. They just disappeared. No, it, um, it, it explains what happened. The, the massive explosion from the star blew out the rings. Because it, it, because it collapsed the actual system itself. That's why. The gamma, the gamma blast from it destroyed the system. Oh, okay. Yeah. I must have missed that. Yeah. I thought they just disappeared. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, they're gone now. <laughs> Actually, all the rings um, are gone now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, now all of them are. Um, anyways, and while they're trying to figure out what is happening here, the events are happening more and more often, and without any pattern or, or way. some of it is just three minutes. Some of them, a whole fucking system just fucking dies mm -hmm. in the most horrendous way possible. They just dropped that. With, like, floating bodies and blood everywhere. Yeah, it goes crazy. Um, you know, everybody's scared. You're trying to figure this shit out. Um, but also, all of a sudden, but also the ring space becomes like hostile ground. Cause that's true. Because before there was nothingness in between the space, and then it was like this fucking gamma radiation light. And and then whenever like these weird blinks or whatever they they are start happening, things show up on on the ship and just dismantle. Just mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I'm just gonna take this guy's head off. Whatever. So yep. Yep. yep <laughs> pretty much. Um, and then out of nowhere. Um, the emperor wakes up, kind of, and walks up with mo far more powerful than he was before. Which, by mm -hmm. the way, we're kind of like 
like hand waving, no pun intended, the part where he just like, okay, we're just gonna kill this guy. It blow yeah. blows him out. <laughs> like, yeah, just just and just like, just molecules just disintegrated and just, <laughs> it was horrendous. It was it was like it was, it was describing that like, that was the one moment where someone was like, well, that happened. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like back out really quickly from the room, or really slowly from the room. God, I love, I love that, oh. I love that part because Trejo and hands uh, uh, Illich, Illich, his uh, yeah, his the, the, but, the butler essentially. Yeah, like, yeah, his sidearms like, like, should we, should we, should we, should we kill that thing? And then Trejo was like, <laughs> if you think this will kill him, go right on ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you think it would have killed him? No. <laughs> No, because he... Could... Why not? He was not connected to anything yet. But, I mean, did you see how much trouble Tanaka had to go through to kill him? Yeah, well, but that she was already... He was already in the system. Right, but, I mean... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like, like, Coma Duarte was kind of, like, in debug mode. Like, he was yeah. a, he was able to, like, to see the code, so he probably could have, like, reconfigured himself or some crap like that. Probably. You know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... Um... But yeah, and then the last book, it's just, it starts off as, oh, like, like a, like a hunt. Mm -hmm. like it's just one of the major, one of the most powerful soldiers, Tanaka, is trying to find Duarte, and because of that, she's trying to find his daughter who escaped with Holden in the previous book. And all hell breaks loose, because then the events are happening even more often. I think, I think the most ominous thing is when Duarte is like, we were dreaming too small and then just disappears. You're like, yeah. uh, can, <laughs> can I get a little bit of clarification on that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, and, and because of all this, one of the events that happened was like everything that was inside the, one of the events, one of the biggest events, everything inside that ring space just disappeared, mm -hmm. including Medina station, who was controlling all the traffic through the gates. And because of that, First, first of all, communication broke, but also everybody just started going through the gates because some of them just can't wait. They have to trade to survive. Um, and that started uh, triggering more and more and more of the events and, and then ships going Dutchman. Yeah. Um, which was a pretty big deal. Um, all of this culminates with um, finding Duarte essentially at the center of the ring space in the, in the, um, the station, the blue station that's there in the center. Um, or his ship, I guess. And Tanaka, Naomi, Okoye, uh, just trying in their respective, you know, local military, scientific, uh, the scientific division, and the underground, all trying to get into the station to, to essentially talk to talk to Duarte and be like, "Yo, stop that, right?" Because at this point, Duarte is trying to control everybody through mind control, essentially. Because of at this point, we don't know, presumably to do something, right? But well, at this point, it's still kind of. At, at this point, to me, it was very much. I think they they thought it was still like, oh, like Kodak just wants to control all humanity. Right, but it, but it's it's. What I thought was really interesting was Miller actually saying like, is Duarte the perp or is he actually just the first victim? Because right. this is exactly how the proto molecule works. You know, it will it will get inside you and then it will capitalize off of your greatest desires and make you think that you want it when really that's it's end game and that's yeah. and and that's when we learned that like the the proto molecule beings the, the builders whatever they call them um were essentially a gigantic hive mind physically weak but mentally powerful hive mind beings yeah. and so and and so they are trying to hijack human bodies because it's a much more durable vessel for them to fight off against their i guess natural enemy or something no yeah not, not a natural well, enemy. actually no there is no natural enemy <laughs> um these things are anything well, but natural yeah and remind me maybe i'm mis mis misremembering this misremembering this but when they were first started evolving when they were doing the deep dives or whatever mm -hmm. into it, what they it was it was a relationship between what essentially became the pro molecule and something else is there something else the dark no. Okay. So, so I actually had to look this up because I was a little bit confused too. Because the the dreamer interludes were yeah. the way they were written, it was kind of more abstract. Yeah. So the proto molecule being started as sea slugs that were on a geothermically active ice planet that had like yep. like an ocean of ice above them. 
um, and and they were able to grow due to volcanism, which is hijacking heat and mm -hmm. light off of nearby thermal vents. But because of their um, like, I guess they had a natural trait for hive mind activity. And so they were able to evolve over millions and millions of years. Like, it, like again, the scope of this is massive. Like, we're not talking about, oh, in 50 years time this happened. Like, we're talking to, in the course of millions of years, they were able to evolve from sea slugs into, uh, like, kind of like jellyfish of light. <laughs> kind of yep. these weird things. And then millions of years after that, they were able to uh, break away from uh, their material bodies and were essentially just uh beings of light that were a hive mind across the galaxy um and because of this because they were a combined intellect they it, again laser focus they were able to advance massively um and so their their biggest scientific achievement was the ring station which actually wasn't a ring station it was described as being a power source because they were able to actually use a different universe, not a galaxy, a different universe as a source of power, and were able to create all this stuff based off it. However, when they tapped into this different universe, the things on the other end of, you know, things outside of what we now know as a ring gate, they didn't like it because, hey, this, why are you, it, it, like, why are you using my area? <laughs> Like, right, 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 right. like my land as a power source, as a turbine. Um, and so because of that, what they did as like a last ditch effort was that they shot out like a protomolecule sample to wherever they believe was going to be habitable life or not habitable life, but just life in general. Um, so that way they can continue on. Um, a lot of these worked like on Ilus. Like that's why we, that's why there was all those machines and whatnot. A lot of them did not work. Uh, like Earth, it was the uh, uh, Phoebe, uh, the moon, uh, the moon from uh, Saturn, uh, intercepted the proto molecule sample, and so the proto molecule failed to obtain Earth. Um, right. And then, and then once the enemy uh, was able to breach what we now know as a ring station, they just closed everything off. They closed, they shut the doors, so that way the enemy would not be able to. Uh, permeate into our universe and destroy the proto molecule sample. It is a, it's an important distinction that they closed the doors on the ring station and did not destroy the ring station. Right. right so, right, right. Yeah. and that's where we're at now. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, essentially, I like the fact. Not... Well, hold on, real quick. I like the fact that we had a description of what happened to the proto molecule builders we don't know jack shit about what's on the other side <laughs> yeah yeah that's makes it even scarier yeah we're just like you know what we're just gonna leave that door closed <laughs> <laughs> um and because it, and because nothing was working and in fact duarte actually took over a lot of mines to go fight against the underground i guess you could say the rebellion um as a last ditch effort you know, a Hail Mary. Jim, uh, James Holden does what James Holden does best and goes and does something very stupid that may or may not work. It just so happened that it kind of worked this time around. And th I mean, he has he has put his life on the line dozens of times up to this point. And, and each time Literally in the first book, he got such a high level, such high levels of radiation just trying to escape. Like if, you know? if, it, if 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 it wasn't for the fact that they were as technologically advanced as they were, he 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 probably wouldn't have made it past the second book. Like like well, like past the first book. I mean, like he would be in the first book, and then the prologue would be his funeral in the second book. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, pretty much. And 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 it's just, uh, what's it? Yeah, he does he does stupid things. He he does heroically stupid things. He puts himself in harm's way, and this time the bill came due, and mm -hmm. you know. So, as far as we know, he injects himself with the proto molecule sample. Yep. Directly, not like just oh, my skin. the no, dumbest way, like 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 not not getting a tempered sample like Duarte no. is. Like nope, just 
Just put it yep. in my veins. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, to be fair, he didn't have time. I don't think. I mean, I don't think that would have. I don't know. You think if would have asked of Okoye, like, "Hey, can I get a, a from this part of my to sample like Duarte did?" You think she would have had like a fridge with a couple of them or something? I, I. <laughs> oh, here's a pill. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely believe that is something that Cortazar did, and it's like the secrets died with him. You know, oh, okay. because okay. it because it was only supposed to be Duarte. That was going to be immortal. Like only right. Duarte was going to be immortal. And then later on, Duarte changed his mind. Like, ah, let's go ahead and make Teresa immortal too. You know? Right, right, right. So it, so it was supposed to be, we had one shot of this. So I'm only going to make enough for one shot. So anything else besides that, it's going to be some weird, you know, right. back alley version of it. Um, so yeah, he injects himself with a proto molecule. And man, the way that last like three lines was this, was this ring was so nice. Like he saw the fireflies, the, the blue fireflies swirling around him, and like he, what he thought was he was gonna find, he found. And then it says, "What was it?" It, it was. Uh, it was. We, uh, we need to talk. Well, no. It, before that, it was like the 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 apologetic uh, bulldog face, the the pork pie hat, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, this uh, what's it? It's like, oh, this must be really bad or something like that. Yeah, it really fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Just so he can talk to the pro molecule or a friendly version of the pro molecule. Again, yeah. Um, and get inside the system to fight off Duarte. And oh boy, did Duarte have a, a battle in there? Man, holy crap! I mean, it was, but it was a battle on both fronts because I, I, mm -hmm. I think what's, what's great is that we have Tanaka, going Doom guy on Duarte. Yep. S starts off without her, without her suit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The suit, the suit had to go, but starts off with a neck break. And then Holden's like, he's not dead. So it's like, all right, we're just ripping tear, baby, sir. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and Teresa saw all of it. Saw 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 a, a mutual disemboweling <laughs> because these, these guys just started going at it. But but then afterwards, uh, what's it? Miller is like, whew, man. I was turning these guys off a hundred times per second, and Duarte was immediately turning them back on. So it's like it's not like yeah. it's not like Holt, Holden didn't do anything. Like he was doing stuff, but you know it. But then his moment came. He had to step up. It had to be him. You know. Yeah, my favorite. My, the way Tanaka died was just that last description of her floating off mm -hmm. like with the the little like the finger. Yeah. Uh, shut at Holden because she was so angry that she couldn't kill him. The, you know? the the last thing she was a warrior through and through holy shit in the most fucked up way possible she was scary both physically and mentally yeah terrifying bro she got shot in the face and didn't die but it's she got shot in the face you know and, and the thing about it was is that when tanaka started to go to the hospital and was talking to that one guy that got uh that got uh attacked by belters i was like are we gonna see a tanaka redemption arc Nope. Nope. Tanaka died as mm -hmm. angry and as evil as as she lived. Uh, it it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, even the last line in her last chapter was the last thing she felt was rage because these two were yep. still alive. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, um. But yeah. So um. To artists that there is a big essentially console in the middle of the station, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to plug yourself into. Um. But Teresa's still there. So he has to do something about that. At this point, I don't think he he was thinking of necessarily having to like go onto that thing. It's until he plugs himself in that he's like, "Oh, okay, this is what Duarte was doing." Yeah, he was fighting all these creatures from beyond. And you know, and 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 the thing, the thing that kind of got me was that when he plugs himself into like the I don't know the network, <laughs> the Matrix, yeah. um, the Matrix, he. He projects himself kind of like the same way that Duarte did. He projects himself to Amos and to be like, hey, you need to get things ready. You guys are going to get the hell out of here. Um, and let let Naomi know, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, well, don't you think you should tell that to, you know, tell, tell that yourself? And he says, we already said our goodbyes. One more ain't going to help anything. And it's just like this weird, like to me, that was kind of heartbreaking because he knew he knew Naomi needed to be in mission mode. And yep. and seeing him like whatever he was now because because it they kind of describe Holden is rapidly like de degenerating from yeah. this yeah because 
my, my thought behind that is that since Duarte had so much time to get infused with the yeah with the proto molecule and you know evolve slowly, this dude did it in like two seconds. <laughs> well, also not only- and it was like a, it was like a full like full strength proto molecule like but I'm, you know injection and and like not only that but like but the the treatments that Duarte was getting was like was measured it was scientific yeah. you know like okay we're yeah. gonna do it like this we're gonna mess with some genetic stuff yeah. and and holds just like boom bah! you know and yeah. it was just like, also describes that the the, the 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 input the way he like plugs himself into the thing it's like ripping him apart you know? mm-hmm. yeah and and uh and so and so holden knew speaking to naomi one last time it's just gonna compromise everything so it's just yeah. it's this it's this really sad like they they said their goodbyes beforehand, and so like we have to get emotions out of this because everyone needs to yep. evacuate. It was, yep. um, it was very calculated mission mode. You guys got to get the fuck out. Of yeah, here. and and you know, and I, and I love how Amos was just like, okay, boss, I got it. Yep, like, <laughs> it's all he needed to hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just takes his branch Amos, out and Amos, sh- shotgun. Yeah. Out. <laughs> Amos was Amos through the whole. Maybe he. He was struggling in probably Persepolis and Babylon. Yeah. But like for the most part, Amos was just Amos throughout the whole thing. He was good old, reliable Amos. Yep. Even after he became that alien thing, he was just like For better Amos. for better or for worse, what you see is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> um, and someone made a very good point because of the epilogue chapter of uh of Leviathan's fall. It's like someone's like Amos said himself, he's gonna be the last man standing, and by God, he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah, and then he plugs in. He tells everybody to fucking evacuate and go to. Importantly, he said it to go to wherever they wanted to be at because the glades were gonna close. Yep. Meaning Alex had a very very hard decision to make. Yeah, it was um, it was heartbreaking for him. You know, yeah, because it was his through this whole book, his kid had a baby and he was, you know, going to another to another planet, to another uh, not station uh, system, mm-hmm. um, you know, to start a new life, just like everybody else. Um, and Alex knew this, man. And, and he was torn because like now, I mean, everybody else were always going to go to the soul system because that's where everything that they knew was at. But Alex had nothing over there. His whole life as an old man was going to be. You know, if he survived, it was gonna be with his uh, grand, grand granddaughter, grand, grandson. I can't remember. I actually don't. No, grandson. Grand, grandson. Grandson. Yeah. It was grandson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. And I love how Naomi didn't even fight it. She knew exactly. And Amos was like, "Yep, you know, I knew, I, I, I knew that was that was gonna be this." Yeah. I forgot what he said. He said something along the lines of like, "Yep, that makes sense to me." And then. You know, yeah, that evacuated it. Russian an answer. It went to the Falcon. Yep, that, that's all I had to say. And they and yep. there were two moments in the final, like Naomi and Jim chapter, where it's like, have you ever have you ever had like a life changing event, but it happens so suddenly that like it, that it, it doesn't you don't really pick up on it until like much much later afterwards. Yeah, and one of them was. Uh, the way they just they were able to pack everything up they ever needed in one bag you know like that's how that's how as as much as they lived their life in the rose and ante like they were just able to just all right pack up and leave um yep and then the part where naomi's like hey is you know is everyone buckled in and whatnot and amos says yep we got muskrat we got teresa and that's us and naomi's like yeah, yeah that I, yeah that that, that is us wow yep. you know and just like that you know like and all that happened so quickly. It was. Mm-hmm. It felt. It was it, intense. It felt. It, was, it felt like a very natural thing, you know, because it. They could. They really could have fallen into the whole like no one last tearful goodbye and we're all crying and blah 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 and you know and, and Holden's like remember me fondly and stuff like that and has this mm-hmm. big old speech. But no, it's like no. We got to get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. We do not. We hold and plugged in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hurry like, up. like, yeah. We don't have time for this. And even then, like, yeah. like as heroic and charismatic as Holden is, his last lines are, "I don't fucking know." And then it just yeah. collapses the ring. Like that's his last. His actual last lines are, "I don't fucking know," fucking no. and collapses yeah. the ring gate. It's just a ring gate. That was that was answering that was that was answering the question of like, you know, 
it's just gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> that I, I, I don't fucking <laughs> like, know. I, I don't fucking know. And, and it's just, it's just like. Which, which to be fair, that's just that was his whole thing through the whole. The first thing he did ever what was was broadcast the attack of the uh, of the of the the Canterbury. The Canterbury. Canterbury uh, Canterbury, and it was like, he didn't know what was going to happen. He was no idea. He just wanted, he was just holding. Yeah. This whole thing was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's try, yeah. let's throw stuff on the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. It just so happened that he had a very, a very strong moral compass, and it worked out for him. Mm -hmm. You know, except for this part. And, this time. Well, it worked out, it worked out for him in the sense that he got everybody out safely, quote unquote, safely. Yeah. Um, you know, but he couldn't get out for obvious reasons. And like, and honestly, I kind of, I, I have to applaud the writers for not, you know, for, for, for not making such a like, like saccharine, sad, dope, you know, like mopey kind of ending. Yeah. Like, 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 no, things are happening. Like we have to go. Mm -hmm. There's no time for emotions. We will, you know, we will mourn for him later. And so like, we don't even get like the major fallout of the events like like it's just it's almost immediately after the falcon enters the soul system there's like a little bit of like a breather naomi says well maybe we'll get back to the stars and then boom we cut to a thousand years later you know where humanity has finally uh gotten faster than light travel and was it faster than light travel it was faster than light travel yeah, oh, yeah, okay. because it it's weird how they describe it, but it, it's described how the the ship that they're on, uh, like essentially collapsed into atoms and was able to zip across like systems in like thirty one hours or something like that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right, yeah. I that. Um, but what I think is uh, another thing was that uh, even Miller's like, you know, this isn't going to fix everything. There are thirteen hundred systems, and only some of these are independent. So you are you like some of these people will die, and then yeah. thirteen hundred systems. And later on in the in the epilogue, the linguist is like, "Oh, this is the home of the thirty worlds." So out of thirteen hundred systems, only thirty of them was able to make it. It's just like, yep. "Oh man, yep. wow, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's less than that's less than a percent of a percent." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So. But who who just happens to be there? Amos. Fucking Amos. <laughs> and, and 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 if you notice, he he is the Duncan Idaho of the series. Did uh, why why can't I die? <laughs> he, screams, <laughs> he screams to the uh, to the sky. But but what's funny is that okay, they describe when he gets when he gets shot by Tanaka, the area that grows back is black, like it's blackened from the wounds. And then it describes in the epilogue that when the linguist finds him, he is black from head to toe. So yeah. Amos has been through some shit in this, in this <laughs> thousand years. Like, like he, he's, he's not just idly sitting by drinking a beer, like things. And, and he even goes on to describe like, yeah, Earth has had a rough millennium, but we're trying to get our shit back together. And they described the link. I forget the linguist's name. It's some weird, like the or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it even describes a linguist saying like, going back to earth was like akin to uh visiting a tomb or something like that like things have yeah, happened which, yeah so yeah. i think I, I think i think it would have been really interesting if we get like a bit of a novella of just like the small events that happened between the collapse of the ring gate and the uh, the linguist going back to earth uh i wouldn't even do a novella i think i'd be just happy with like a historical Oh, excuse me. Like you know how like like uh, Josh R. Martin does like the world of Ice and Fire or whatever. Oh, like a timeline. Like a historical, like like a timeline or like a historical. Like this is this is what happened between yeah. the year this and the year that. Because I mean, you know, pictures. Because I mean, you get you get some small details, and it, and, and it's the little details that I love. Where it's like the linguist is like, okay, give me post give me post Laconia pre-collapse English. Pre-collapse, yeah. And then, and then when Amos is like, oh, well, I know a little bit of Belter. I don't know if you do. And the, is... and the linguist gets excited. It's like, oh, a dead language. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You got English in there? I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> yeah. My Chinese ain't so good. I know a little bit of Belter. I don't know if you, I don't know if you speak it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And he's just there protecting Earth. He's just like, I'm the guy you gotta get through. Mm-hmm. Him, him and yeah. his him and his trusty auto shotgun <laughs> <laughs> still functioning after a thousand years hey man if there's one person that can make a gun work that long it's gonna be amos <laughs> yeah no shit 
Oh man, but yeah, that's that's the end of the expanse, man. The <sighs> Leviathan Falls. What a beautiful title for the last book mm -hmm. of of the series. I want I want more. I want more, damn it. I want more, but it ended so nicely. I don't Oh, I no, don't. oh no, no, no. Okay, okay. I'm not saying I want more from the Rosa and Anti group. I just want more from this universe. Like I want more oh, Okay. You know, and I, I still have to read the novellas because I, I I finished the churn, so I still got like Oberyn and stuff like that right. to go through. So I mean, I guess there's like more. Um, yeah. But like, but man, just such a such a fascinating world with how the politics work, and you know, I just I want more of that. You know, it was it was it was all so good, all of it, all of it was. So, I don't think other than the drummer chapters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> which which book was that? Was that was that Babylon's Ashes? No, that was not Persepolis Rising. It was Tiamat's Wrath. No, it wasn't. It was totally Tiamat's Wrath. Really? Yep. Fuck, no, like no, years. never mind. It was Persepolis Rising. My bad. Oh, that's right, because that's when they take over and chase on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The soul fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, right. Tiamat's Wrath doesn't have Drummer in it, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Drummer wasn't bad as a character. It was just... I just... I That's my one biggest gripe. Is like, how do you take a character that is supposed to be this interesting of a position and not make him interesting? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, they're, and, oh. and, and they're like a lot of people like, oh, I miss Drummer, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't... I don't. <laughs> I fucking don't. <laughs> I mean, pretty Persepolis, maybe. I don't know. Ah, I, yeah. I never found Drummer interesting to begin with. Like, I... I really? I thought she was a good goon, and that's it. You know, like I really didn't feel like she went beyond that, and and wow. and it's and it's that's kind of sad because, like up until that point, the James S. Corey team has had a really good job of like, hey, remember this character? And the best example is Bossia from uh, in Cibola Burn, because like, oh my god, I barely remember this guy from Caliban's War. Well, here's what he's been doing this entire time. And guess what? He has a compelling narrative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, and Havelock. Oh, right. well, let's not forget Havelock. Havelock's my boy. Star oh, Helix. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, so, Andrew, you feel empty like I do? Yeah, I feel empty inside. I uh I'm I'm trying I'm trying to trying to fill that gap <laughs> with more Lancer. <laughs> it's kind of working. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. I mean, nine books, nine books, nine books, man. Hey, listen, at least you didn't have to wait like years in between. You no, know, you know, honestly, if I was if I was a casual reader of the Expanse, like as it was coming out, I actually felt like the pace it came out would have been perfect for me. You know, one year because right? like it was one every year, and then towards the end it was one every two. Years. Yeah, right? which which like the last three books were like. I think there was two that had a two year gap and then, you know, but, but yeah, that would have been totally fine. At least I'm not waiting 18 years for the winds of winter to come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So 10 out of 10, not enough water. Yeah. Not, uh, not, um, we needed more, uh, uh, desert planets. Um, yeah. And spice. Could could have done with some more big robots. That's definitely gonna yep. gonna have to knock some points off for that. Uh, so one out of ten. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably give it like a strong three. <laughs> 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 oh, all right. So Andrew, Easy. while we were gone, now now that we're done talking about the books and boring. Nerds, well, just legitimately the easiest nine books I've ever read. Just, oh, same. Bam, Holy bam, shit. bam. Like, when I first started, I didn't know there were nine books. Right. I thought it was like you know, six or seven or whatever. And then it was like nine, which doesn't sound like I love a difference between seven and nine, but like right. in my brain, I was like, that is a long fucking series. Before we continue, can I be excused just for a moment? Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'll be right back. No, you're good.
Andrew, we're done with the expanse. Nine books down, you know, longest lo lo longer book series I have ever read in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're done with all that that nerd shit. Yeah. Because while well, we were gone in our hiatus, or impromptu hiatus. <laughs> what actually took so long for us to record an episode <laughs> was that, Jose. Well, we got to play one of high. I want to offer promotions. No, thank you, Stucky Bowie. What? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta twitch. Thing. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. What actually took so long was we got to play the the board game. The one and only. The biggest of them all. Twilight Imperium! <laughs> hey, nice. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were, originally, we were going to do a full episode on Twilight Imperium because... Okay. I was to play on Saturday and record on Sunday. Okay. My thoughts on the game. So here's what happened. Jose and Kristen came down for the weekend. <laughs> and the idea was that Friday we would just, like, eat some ribs, because I made ribs. Um, yeah, yeah. They were good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, eat some ribs, play some casual board games. Saturday, <laughs> while the girls were out getting their nails did, we would set up the board game for three hours. An intense, boor, uh, an intense labor of love, and so and so they would come back, and and the the table, the board would literally be set for galactic diplomacy, and yeah. and what happened? We started at noon. <laughs> Some things got in the way at seven o'clock, and we didn't finish until one thirty in the morning. <laughs> So by the time Sunday rolled rolled around, me and Jose were like, fuck, we are too tired to record. <laughs> <laughs> we woke up, because we even if we're, even though we're tired, we're like, we still wake up for some reason. We just sat at his patio just looking at the sunrise. Yeah, at like se se six o'clock in the morning, having like yeah. maybe four hours of sleep, because we're old men now. We wake up <laughs> at five in the morning. <laughs> and we're at... at, 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 at one of us was just like, are we going to record? And the other one was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I guess we get to do, like, a little, like, uh, first impressions of Twilight Imperium. Because, so, po Twilight Imperium was brought to my attention because I was friends with a bunch of, like, board gamers. And they were all like, mm -hmm. oh, if you like crunchy games, you got to play Twilight Imperium. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. And, yeah, it only takes eight hours. I'm like, what? I like, yeah, it's, it's like they explained to me. It sounded very intriguing, you know. It has a little bit of role play of obviously war gaming. Um, it's massive. It's a big, big chunker of a game. Right. And then I get invited to a game with them, and I played it, you know, for the first time, uh, learning the rules. Uh, it took us from like 11 a.m. to like 10 p.m. So, you know, we did have some breaks in between. Um, and then completely forgot about it. It was like. Played it once, like three years went by, and I'm like, I was looking at Amazon, and it was the cheapest I've ever been at a hundred dollars because it's usually like 175. Me and I'm like, if I don't buy it right now, I am not gonna buy it ever. And, and, and I'm like, Andrew, do you want to play Twilight? It's like, yeah, 
uh, you know, but can we get the girls to play with us? And I'm like, let me try. You, you want to describe how that conversation went? <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it was essentially, to our surprise, because, like, Kristen is usually, like, you know, she's down for whatever. She's like, oh, well, ask them. See, I'll ask Teresa if she wants to play. And I'm like, okay. So I sent a message. I explained what it is in a couple of emails. And Andrew and I were just, like, waiting for the conf- to see what they were going to say. <laughs> and then we were... Yeah, we, we were expecting, like, you know, no, oh, no, it's not too complicated, too long, I don't really And Theresa's like, yeah, I'm down. And we're like, what? <laughs> so, needless to say, we made a weekend out of it, and, and we decided to play it. Spent a whole week trying to, learn, trying to learn the rules by ourselves. And in three hours, setting up the game, doing a mock game between two players just to kind of get an idea of the rules. Mm-hmm. And then, like, eight hours of playing with, uh, with a four-player four player game. Yeah. And it was... What's it? Up until this point, Twilight Imperium had been a joke. Like, we're like, oh, haha, ha, quick game of Twilight Imperium. Oh, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm not going to lie when I said when we went to bed, I was like, I was like laying in bed with like staring at the ceiling. And I'm like, and, and, and I said out loud to Teresa, I'm like, that was the best board game I've ever played. <laughs> and Teresa's like, yep. <laughs> it was so good. That was because. Okay, so I played it before, but it's been so long I forgot about it, right? Yeah. But I was just, when you when you teach a board game to somebody new, somebody who's never played it, there's always the big chance of they're gonna be bored, or you have to explain the rules over and over again, mm-hmm. and remind them of like, oh, you cannot do that, you can do this, you know, like that kind of stuff. But everybody picked it up so quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the first one or two rounds were a little slow because you know, right? Oh, you gotta do this. Oh, it's your turn. That kind of stuff. But after like the third uh, goal objective thing got flipped or whatever, it was like pam 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 pam. People knew what what they needed to do, and I was honestly I was afraid Theresa was gonna get bored. I yeah. was. I mean I, I don't you know she's not like us. Even Kristen she oh, she was on her phone the whole time. But she, even her was paying attention even though she was reading her. Well doubts. like well like not only that but e- even I had my own doubts because like I woke up that morning and I was like kind of congested, mm-hmm. I had a bit of a headache. I'm like. Am I really ready for eight hours of this? But yeah. man, that time just whoosh, eight hours gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like that. And your friend Alex, you know, like he was there too. And I know he plays board games, but this is like the board game. Like, I don't yeah. know if. I thought I was going to have to be like a cheerleader for, every, cheerleader for everybody and just kind of like, mm-hmm. come on, guys, we can do this. Like, but no, bro. Everybody was. Everyone is engaged. Everybody was like planning what they were going to do. They were like doing alliances with somebody else, messing with other people. Like, tensions were building. Like it was, it was an excellent game. Like this game is known to be one of the best board games out there in the world for a reason. And it, we experienced that on Saturday. Man, it 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 lived up, it lived up yeah. to it. I like I I, and like and like the thing about it is is that like, the most compelling parts, are the things that exist outside the mechanics. You know, mm-hmm. like there like there are mechanics for invading planets and stuff like that. But then when it comes to like things that actually make the game what it is, it's just like, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, feel free to make deals with the uh, players. Uh, what, what, whatever you want to do, whatever. It, it, yeah. you know, there, yeah. There's nothing, nothing, nothing's illegal when it comes to like those kind of deals, you know? Yeah. So, it, so, so then it really becomes like, okay, well, <laughs> let's see how these people are in these kind of scenarios. Um, yep. And man. And the thing, and the one, then the one thing that I didn't think was going to happen, which was the, the, you know, after an eight-hour game, I never thought anybody would say this, but the user was like, "I want to play that again." Oh yeah! In the back of my hand, in the back of my head, like, yeah, I want to like I right of, now play it again. I kind of do too. <laughs> yeah, like, like we all ended up, with, we all ended up with like, now that we know the rules, now that we go through a full game, like the next one is like, this is it. Yeah, like this uh, is the game. Like, hey, uh, what do you, what are you guys doing tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was it? And and like the. <laughs> The funny thing about it was, was that how real world stuff plays into it. Because let's be honest, if it was literally anybody other than Teresa, I would have gunned it for Mechatol Rex. But I'm like, she's going to make me sleep on the couch, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were playing, you were playing too passive. I know. Oh, I know. I know. And I, and that, that's my one regret. I'm like, you know, when 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 Teresa like started to attack Alex, I'm like, I really should have went in there. <laughs> just... Yeah, <laughs> me too, honestly. But then you told me you weren't going to, so I didn't have somebody to back me up, and I have like the one negative to everything. Like it was, 
it was an awesome time. And, and the other thing too is that I was expecting for us to be like, you know, when you when you play a new game for the first time and you're always like going back to the rules to clarify things. Mm -hmm. We barely did that. The only times, I mean, I kept going back to the rules, but it was mainly just for like that order of play thing. Right. It wasn't for like, oh, what is the rule for this? Like the rules were a lot. There were a lot of rules, but it all made sense. Right. And it was easy for everybody to just kind of like, okay, yeah, we got to do this before we do this. It makes sense. Like mm -hmm. just one step after another. It was excellent. It was literally the best game I've played ever. Like it was so good. Not part of it was weak. And I feel like, it is intimidate, intimidating, you know, and I feel like there's, yeah, there's some people who might not be into that kind of stuff, but I feel like if you even have the most slightly inclining of, like, giving it a shot, you should, because it's surprisingly accessible, especially if you know somebody who has a copy of it. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and if if you have somebody that knows the game, it, mm -hmm. it, you're already, like, you can cut out at least an hour, you know? Mm -hmm. Easy. It, yeah, like, the next time we play it, it's probably going to be way less time and we don't have to do the three hours of prep and buck games like right did because we already know the rules but like but like you know? but even then it's like okay so no two games are ever i feel like are ever going to be the same because yeah. it's 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 a six up to six player game with the expansion is eight but even then you have what 17 actions Se I, uh, 17 factions yep i think actually with the expansion it's up to like 20 something I could be wrong. I, I, I heard it, it might've been as high as 25, which if that's true, that's almost not unlimited replayability, but a high level of replayability because you're gonna, you're gonna get combinations that, um, because each faction plays a little bit different, you know, they have their bonuses and they have their negatives and stuff like that. Um, so if that's true, you're gonna have like high levels of replayability because, you know, how I played the the Zika Kingdom might be completely different to how you played the Zika Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. You know? Somebody, because I I was very restrained because I have a, my my faction had like a negative one to all the attacks. Mm -hmm. But somebody might not pay attention to that. Somebody might just freaking do it and have excellent rolls throughout it. Yeah, and, and and one of the things that I one of the things that was really cool was that uh, naturally Teresa and Kristen played aggressive factions. Of course, of course. But we were able to keep the game peaceful just by, like, what's it? By, like, deterrence. Where it's like, okay, yeah. if you guys fire the first shot, the rest of us are going to... Our, the rest of us are going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. And so and so we had this, like, Cold War feeling throughout the entire board where it's like, okay, who's going to fire the first shot? And, and it got to the point where the anxiety was so bad that when Alex just like, fuck it, I'm going to use my space cans. I'm like, Alex, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> like, no, you moron. Don't I'm, trying to find, I'm trying to find the, the how many factions. Uh, but yeah, no, like it was, it was like, it was so tense. It was so good. I, I, I honestly like, there's been games that I played before that I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to play that any, any time in the near future. Yeah. Again. But this one, even though it's like eight hours, I'm like, guys, can we come over and like play it? And, yes. Um. And and like, what's it? Okay. So you're like, wow, how eight hours is a lot. But you'll go through the initiative order where everyone will do their turn and move through the planets and take over whatnot. And you'd be like, man, that wasn't so bad. And then you look up and like an hour and a half has gone by. You'd be like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like time just evaporates while you're playing that game. It's it, you're you're in a time warp. It's weird. I can't describe it any yeah. other way. Yeah, because like six hours went. When you told me that six hours went by, I was like, what? Like it didn't feel like it. And like the only reason it took us to one in the morning is because something happened. So I had to, we had to step away for like what, right. two, three hours. And I so, so and I, I was I was so bummed out because I'm like that's it that's the game we're never gonna be able to. Me too, back. man. We're, we're, Me ne too. we're never gonna be able to pick this back up. And then when you came back and you're like, do you want to finish the game? Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was coming back and I'm like, oh, people are going to be tired. You know, I'm going to ask, but I'm sure people are just going to want to go to sleep mm -hmm. and finish it in the morning. And I knew if we, and I knew if we would have waited till the morning, we probably would have actually fizzled out. Yeah. Um, But everybody was like, I think Theresa was like the only one that was hesitant because it was pretty late. Right. But even her, she was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 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 even though we were like a little bit tired by the time you guys came back, 
it was still there. Like we we still mm-hmm. wanted to play. Granted, the the momentum kind of slowed down a bit, but it was still a, it, still the best board game experience of my life. But but let's be perfectly honest with you. If you if you had to leave in the middle of a game of like Shadows of Over Camelot or like Betrayal in the House in the Hill, like that's it. That's the game. We're done. Pack it up. Yep. Yep. You know. Yep. But this is like no no. We're finishing this. <laughs> yep. Yep. Dude, it that. Oh. Do you know how much time the I table. put into this? <laughs> the table, the way the table looked at the end of the game was just... But now, by the way, 24 factions in total. Okay, sorry. So, yeah, 24. For an yeah. eight-player uh, game, <laughs> 24. Dude, that's... Yeah, that's... I, don't think I, 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 I feel comfortable to go up to six players now, but I don't know about eight. I think eight is... Eight, eight would have to be like a once-a-year... Like, yeah, like, like big, big event. Big. Everybody dresses up. A once a year big event in which you're getting a lot of people together in one location. <laughs> cool, wow. Jose. Man, that will never happen. <laughs> I am not bringing Twilight and Imperium to the If you bring that game, I'm setting it up. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I mean, if I bring it, that's, that's, all of, that's one table all of Saturday. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I need it. I need this game. <laughs> Jose, look at me. Look, look at no. Look at look at me. Look, look at me. Look at my eyes. No. Look at my eyes. Look at me. So, anyways, Jose, look at me. Uh, the movie. Jose, look at me. <laughs> All right. So yes, Twilight Imperium, amazing. I thought it was an excellent, excellent, fantastic it, game. Legitimately, every, it, it lived up to everything. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because there was so much hype behind it, and like, if you were final, if you're final, shut up and sit down, like we are. They, they gush about that game uh-huh. all the time. Um, but you know, usually things that have a lot of hype are like, okay, cool, right? I mean, but no, this was great. Just, just imagine playing eight hours of literally anything else. And it would be like, oh my god, really? Eight yeah. hours of of, uh, of freaking Dinosaur Island or something like that? Like, no, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> dinosaur Island uh, tournament. <laughs> uh, but no, this was this was awesome. This was, I mean, like truly awe inspiring. And, and 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 time went by and it didn't feel like it was it was crazy. And it, I, I think this might have been the first like board game. That I got like emotionally invested into it beyond the point of am I gonna win or am I gonna lose? You know? Yeah, I didn't honestly I didn't care that I, like if I was gonna win or not. I was like, I was trying to get as many points as possible, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I was so intrigued by like my faction. I was trying to like optimize it and like do all it. I'm like, fuck, I should have done that. Yeah. And like, should I take that planet? I need that to get this. It was like really int- I I loved it. I loved it all the way through. I can't I can't I can't wait to play it again. <sighs> ten out of ten. Actually no, nine out of ten, because there's no max in it. But with the expansion. Factions, there's the mix. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so we are at the best. My favorite part of the whole of, my, of the whole show. The end. <laughs> no. Se- Session highlights. See, you can't cue it up, Andrew. <laughs> well, you didn't give me a chance. <laughs> All right, want to do it again? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> That was decided. Yeah. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I, w- I wish it kind of dipped off at the end, like bam, 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 bam. <laughs> No. <laughs> All right, session highlights. Um, it's been a minute. So, was the last time we had a show? Or were we still talking about rhyme? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> no. No. I think... No. I don't think. Well, so we've been playing short, short adventures, and we're going through uh, Tales of the Yarning Portal. We 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 beat. I think I think the last episode we were talking about starting. Oh, uh, hey. from the Citadel. I uh, I no, no, oh, not starting the Sunless Citadel. Maybe I think starting. Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, sorry. Anyways, so we completed Sunless Citadel. It was great, uh, <laughs> and now we mo- now we moved on to. Uh, uh, the last Forge, episode, Forge. man, I'm looking forward to Sunless Citadel next episode. That was great. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now we're moving on to Forge of Fury. Mm-hmm. Andrew, in the past few sessions, I'm just gonna say sessions. Um, do you have any highlights? <laughs> 
I would. Hmm. Here, I'll go first. Well, so I mean, I mean, if I really had to put like one highlight, like one moment, it would probably have to be like Heather's justification for why her character and, and my character are not in this adventure because we're playing different yeah. characters. Yeah. And that was because for people that don't know, my previous character in Sons of Citadel was a dwarf that had like the stone masonry and stuff like that. And pretty much fell in love with a with a with a, a very heavy obsidian. Obsidian, thank you. I couldn't. I was like obelisk. No, um, with a very heavy obsidian tablet. I was like, I'll come back for you and stuff like that. <laughs> and so, and and, and 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 it was very clear. I think it, it might have been. I could be reading the situation wrong, but I think you were trying to kill our characters at the beginning of Forge of Fury, right? Uh, no, just yours. Okay, just mine. Okay. No, I was, I was kidding. <laughs> no, I wasn't trying to. I was honestly, I was trying to knock everybody out and have your stuff still. So okay. You guys actually kill my guys out. Oh, okay. Um. So 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 we had like a kind of a weird like might have been a clunky like oh uh well, Brenther just doesn't want to go on this adventure because I don't know he's tired. <laughs> so, yeah yeah yeah. And, and so so then it was Heather was like Heather was like well how about we go and get that uh, uh that obsidian. The, the obsidian tablet so we can replace our coffee table <laughs> <laughs> and, and printer's eyes just light up at the thought of going back for the obsidian yeah, i'm gonna have to do like a like a one shot just to get that meanwhile <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah so, so the rest of the party is going to like this epic mountain filled with orcs and killing things and then meanwhile and, ashes too. and it's like it's like and then yeah and then brenther and zona like meet these weird cast of characters underground or something that's so stupid <laughs> but it was beautiful yeah, I, 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 I just really want the obsidian tablet <laughs> And then, and that's a justification. That's a justification for why the team lost its monk and cleric was because they were too busy getting a replacement for yeah. their coffee table. <laughs> God damn it! It still gets me. <laughs> oh man, I think, I think for me, last session was actually a, a lot of like a bit of a highlight because there was so much fighting, like. There were so many nail biting moments where, like, and, and seeing like Chris's our new player face, and and and, and like when when like Erin failed her her saving her strength check to try to get Rollo out of the way. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you guys are assaulting a fortress inside of a mountain. Yeah, uh, with a bunch of orcs in. And we right? and we went about it the wrong way, <laughs> because you know full full frontal assault. As it turns out, not yeah, not really pretty hard. <laughs> Yeah. Um. <laughs> and by the end of this, you guys were all cocky in the beginning. You have fucking uh, Jiffy snapping people left and right. Somebody throwing spells into other places. And then you guys, you guys get to this area with a very narrow hallway and like eight orcs on the other side. Well, it's not just eight orcs on the other side. Is that we take care of those orcs and then eight more show up and we're like, God damn, there just ain't no end to these things. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all day. Could, it's all day. <laughs> Turns out some of us can't do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very intrigued as to what's going to happen next session uh, on this one. Like I said, oh, hold on. Wait, my hair's getting all crazy. Hold on. Like I said, I have a plan. I okay. don't know. It's And it's going to have to be, everyone's going to have to cooperate and agree to it. But I have a plan. I'm not going to say okay. anything right now because I don't want you to metagame this. But... I, if if I think I know how it's going to play out, we might be able to fight our way out of this. Okay, then I'm not gonna say anything because I'm very intrigued about that. Yeah. Let's just say that the the, the turn counter that there is for a reason. Okay, it hasn't ended yet. Okay, we 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 seem to be having a very like Lord of the Rings moment where like th like they're coming through the doors. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> There may, there may or may not be orcs on the other side trying to cut away the bridge. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jose? Jose? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Um, 
I also like how like <laughs> how due, due to like the the nature of the new characters. Heather is more emotionally attached to my character than I am. <laughs> and when I and when I was crossing the bridge, and, was, and, and you were like, Andrew, do you have more characters? And I'm like, yeah, yeah of course I do. And Heather's like, don't. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 whatever happens, happens. It's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> Luckily for you, I misread that, but I was like, oh no. Would you, uh, never mind, never mind, because it, it's still relevant. Don't pull the curtain back on that. I just wanted to know what you okay. misread, but. We're not, we're not going to spoil anything. It, it, no, it was something similar. I, something was supposed to happen before the other. Oh, okay. Was, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> do you have more characters? Of course I do. No, are you kidding me? I, I have three characters <laughs> for this adventure alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do. I just do characters. I actually do have three characters for this adventure. <laughs> so, oh, man. that way, in case one dies, I can just pick right back up. Like, yeah, just keep, <laughs> keep this ball rolling. <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, I think that's the end of this episode. <laughs> I should hope so. We're at two and a half hours. <laughs> two and a half hours. Yeah, we in a few minutes. We had a lot to talk about. That's okay. Um, we had we we had like I said, we had to give people something to bridge that gap. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody who joined us today for another episode of Attack of Park. I promise we will try our best to make this year more consistent. has been yeah, the consistent. unluckiest year for us. It's just, yeah. it's not like it's not like we're it's not like there's like background drama or something like that. Like oh Teresa yeah, no. I'm, or like no, or like, no. like, like yeah, oh, Jose like slapped my girlfriend or something like that, so we're yeah, not talking. No, like, no, 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 no. It's literally just like, oh hey, can we record today? Fuck, I forgot this happened. And then that yeah, you know Yeah. Or like, oh there's this or like, you know, just holidays and shit. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, we'll, 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 we'll hopefully now we'll have a more consistent release schedule just like before. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed our ramble on the expanse. And please, if you're even if it's slightly as inclined into sci-fi yep. uh, literature, give the expanse a shot. It is an excellent entry to sci-fi. It is easy to read. It is extremely entertaining. It's fun. Like Andrew said, <laughs> yeah, like Andrew said, it's a lot of fun. It's like a, like, it, it's literally is like turning into a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, we might do another book later on, but I think our next episode is going to be about monsters with Heather, our special guest. Um, but yeah, with that, I hope you guys had a good time. You learned a little bit. You get inspired to go and read some of the, ex some of the Expanse. Um, and if you want to see our shenanigans live, please make sure to follow us on Twitch and Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else you watch things. Also, this episode will be released as a podcast format on iTunes and Apple and everywhere else you listen to things. Um, but with that, doesn't YouTube you so have a podcast thing now? Yep, it has, yep. This episode is going to be as a podcast on on there too. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, everybody who joined us today, and as always, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. What's left of it, and a extremely successful week. And be that. be sure be sure to tune in to our upcoming Lancer series. Ha! Ah, I said it. You can't take it oh, away. God. You can't take it away. <laughs> no, no. I can still edit it out. Play the outro music. <laughs> You know what? It's going to end like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys.